It is great to be back on the north coast of New South Wales for a first-time event. The players ahead of the Australian Ladies Classic this week have been out enjoying some of the local attractions. They had an experience with the Dolphins. They also went to the one and only, yes, the world-famous Big Banana. When you're in this part of town at Coffs Harbour, you just have to go to the Big Banana. You can have one pretty much any flavour you like as well. And it was all fun and games before the players got town to business this week at Bonneville Golf Resort as we welcome you to coverage of day three of this Australian Ladies Classic at a very special course. Hi everybody, Warren Smith along with Ewan Porter to bring you all the action today of the next four hours of some of the best female players in this part of the world doing a battle in a co-sanctioned event. This is going to be fun this week to see how they fare here at Bonneville. Yeah, for sure, Warren. The girls have travelled here from all over the world. They've been in Australia for the last five or six weeks competing, but I'm sure they've experienced nothing like this here at Bonville. And as we take a look at the course, a little drizzly conditions early this afternoon, but this is a unique course in the Australian golfing landscape. There's nothing else like this around the country. Not at all. Terry Watson designed this place back in 1992. He's only Australian design. A lot of elevation changes, but the scenery here, Warren, absolutely beautiful. There's nothing to compare it to, that's for sure. What a weekend we are set for as we take a look now at some of the highlights, just to set the scene for you over what's happened over the first couple of days here at the Australian Ladies Classic and Hannah Green coming off a very good performance last week at Kuyonga at the Australian Women's Open. Finished third last week in only her second event as an LPGA Tour member. She was 11th in the opening event in the Bahamas, so a great start to the season for Hannah. That was a birdie there on the second hole, day one. A fixture here on the Australian scene for too many years to count is Dame Laura Davies. She comes out here every summer. She's such an ambassador for the world of golf. She comes around and plays all the local pro-ams when she's in this part of the world as well, and great to see her here at Bonville. It certainly is. There's no one that really represents the game quite like Laura Davies, as you mentioned, playing plenty of pro-ams in country Australia and around the world and just a great ambassador for the game as the rookie, the LPGA rookie, Rebecca Artis, with a second shot there on the second hole. This was a birdie putt on day one. Rolling it in beautifully. And she had a chance for back-to-back -back birdies. Tee shot here at the par three third. And that one tracking towards the cup as well. So she would go on to make that to be in good shape early in this first Australian Ladies Classic. Done a lot of good work with Gary Edwin and Luke Edwin, especially on her putting over the years up on the Gold Coast. Very efficient right there. Now, Christina Kim, Solheim Cup stalwart for the US against the Europeans in some torrid battles over the years. Great to see her back. She loves coming down here. I know she's a big fan of the Australian courses and first up she was super impressed with what she saw at Bonville Golf Resort. And such a great personality. Three LPGA Tour wins. She's uh, All the girls out there on tour absolutely love spending time with Christina Kim. Now Danish player Nana Madsen, birdie putt on the par 5 18th. A chance to attack potentially if you're long enough off the tee. And now Holly Clyburn was setting a torrid pace early on. She was. Here she is on the par three eighth hole, up the hill, just near the clubhouse and just missing the green to the left, but pin high. Tapping in for a par. Good player, Holly Clyburn, a winner on the ladies' European tour. Uh, Englishwoman Kylie Walker at the par three eighth. Number of par threes here at Bonville coming over the water into the heart of the green. The greens just in superb condition this week. They really are. These 328 greens rolling absolutely beautifully. Great putt there from Kylie Walker. Now Felicity Johnson trying to make par at the iconic 17th. And that dropping in the back door. That was clever. <laughs> You'll take that one. It's normally bad luck in this game, so you take all the good luck you can get. The Icelandic player on the Ladies European Tour, Valdez Jons Dottier. Solid opening to her round. Six birdies she made during it, and it's happening there for par after the great tee shot here on three. A chance to make birdie. So the girl who loves her karate did karate for three or four years, Warren. So you don't want to get on the wrong side of Jons Dottier. But a fantastic shot there. She's not going to be too frustrated with that one. Tap in for a birdie. So in good shape through the opening round of this Australian Ladies Classic here 
at Bonville Golf Resort. As we go to the highlights from round two, there was some weather around in the morning as well. Back at the par 3 eighth, again over the water, playing 154 metres in the second round. That was a brilliant shot from Daniela Holquist, the Swedish woman. Right hand hole location needing to fade it in there. Not the ideal shot for these right handed golfers, but makes mince meat of it with a birdie. Now, Valdez Johns Dottier continuing her charge with three birdies in the second round. Only one bogey to keep her within three shots of the lead at the midway point of this brand new event. Yeah, she's going along very nicely. Solid par there on. Number eight. Now, this is the French woman, Celine Boutier. She had six birdies and an eagle in day two. Excuse me, this is still Jean's dot here, getting a little ahead of myself there. Now, this Celine Boutier. She had six birdies and an eagle in day two. This was on the par three eighth to finish her round and would wind up as the clubhouse leader. Beautiful shot there. And this, one of the six birdies, the French woman who won the Sanya Ladies Open on the Ladies European Tour, her first win just three months ago. Almost Hainan Island in China conditions here this week. Very humid as it does get there in the very bottom of China as we take a look at Nana Madsen. You can see the break on this putt, Warren. Mentioned there's a lot of elevation changes around here and it comes into play on a lot of these greens. So you've really got to have a lot of imagination. Yeah, your distance control is a real premium this week. You need to be sharp with your irons to find the right portion of the green, or you could, as we just saw with Madsen, have a pretty tricky putt. And if you get downhill, down grain, these greens are super quick. Laura Davies playing her third here to the 18th. Just a 9-9 in, and it's a very difficult approach to the 18th green, playing off a downslope to an elevated green. It's tough to get the distance Right, but no problems at all for Dame Laura Davies. It wouldn't be a surprise if she gives this a massive shake over the next couple of days and all smiles as usual to Hannah Green. Yeah, birdie putt there on number 13, day two. She had three wins on the Symmetra Tour last year, Hannah Green. Looking to add another victory here in Australia this week is the German Olivia Cowan. This on the par 3 eighth. Warren, I said how difficult that pin placement was. These girls are uh, having no trouble with it. Yeah, despite it being tucked over there near the water, they're certainly attacking it. And Cowan had just enough pace on that particular putt to fall in the front edge. Remained within two shots of the lead with that putt is the English girl, Holly Clyburn. Despite a couple of bogeys mid-round in day two, she remained at, top of, at the top of the leaderboard birdied her final two holes. Great way to finish. And that was the birdie there on number nine. Boy, there's some silky smooth putting strokes. We're looking forward to watching live here this weekend in this third round of the Australian Ladies Classics. And native wildlife as well. There are koalas dotted around the course here at the Bonville Golf Resort. I know the overseas players, the Europeans in particular, after the weather has been pretty dire at times, of course, up there in the Northern Hemisphere. They are loving spending, up, some of them up to a month down here in Australia and back-to-back -back weeks with the New South Wales Open to be played at Coffs Harbour uh, next week as well. So a great chance to really chill out and some nice playing conditions before they head back home to uh, the early part of the Northern Ladies European Tour. Let's go to Annabelle Rowley now. And well, for the moment, Annabelle, the rain has stopped. It's rather nice out there. You and Porter and Warren Smith, it's wonderful to be with you today at the beautiful Bonville Golf Resort. Unfortunately, we do have a little bit of rainy weather. We've been fortunate to avoid the heavier cells and showers, but uh, we have experienced some, some light showers in the area. So the girls will have to contend with the wet conditions and possibly some further uh, rain this afternoon is also forecast. Um, it's a balmy 26 degrees and there's absolutely no breeze to speak of. All considered, really, the conditions are still conducive to shooting low scores this afternoon. So I'm looking forward to seeing some exciting golf. Thank you, Annabelle. It will be interesting to see what is a good score here this afternoon. Imagine anything around the four or five under mark will have you making a move up the leaderboard before tomorrow's final round. 
Yeah, I have to agree, Warren. There were only 18 scores under par on day one, just a few more yesterday, but with the conditions still like they are, there's still there's a lot of birdie opportunities out there, but there's a lot of trouble that awaits should you stray, stray a little offline. It is a risk-reward golf course. There is no question about that. You can take on some pins. You see that one there tucked on the left-hand side of 18. Difficult to get to on that left-hand side, so... We'll leave the uh, pretty shots for the moment and take you out on course as far as some live golf is concerned. We are set for a terrific afternoon with the rain holding off for the moment. Some squally showers around this part of the north coast of New South Wales. But what a setting we have. It doesn't get much more picturesque than what you see here at Bonville Golf Resort. And at the moment, our one-stroke leader is Lene Boutier. Two under today through her opening four holes to be one clear of Holly Clyburn, our first round leader. Hannah Green is there again, making a move on day three. She's one under through five and only three back from Boutier. So good to see Hannah Green once again up there at the top of the leaderboard as she was last week, uh, going pretty close at uh, Kuyonga for the Australian Ladies Open last week. She certainly did. Three wins last year in the Symmetra Tour. She also had 12 top tens. Very consistent player. And the top four names there, still the same as the end of day two, but they've just flip-flopped a little bit. Holly Clyburn dropping a shot. Boutier making two early birdies. Florentina Parker, a winner. Ladies Mediterranean Open last year on the LET. She's one under par through 10. Nana Madsen, a couple over through five holes. Tough start. But still there. She's only six strokes behind. Looking down the board, Marianne Scarpnord, a familiar name for regular watchers of women's golf on the Ladies European Tour. She's even par and plus one today in her third round. As we take a look again, uh, some of the action here at Bonville Golf Resort. That was Rebecca Artis to move into third spot. Birdie putt there, number seven. A couple of wins on the ladies' European tour for Rebecca Artis, formerly from Coonabarra Brandwarren. She jumped out, made birdie at the second before giving that shot straight back to the course at the par three third, but chance to move closer to our leader, Celine Boutier. Oh, and that's Isabel Boy now. Just missing there. Number seven, just slightly over borrowing. And that's something the players are going to have to keep an eye out for over the weekend, Warren, with wet greens. They don't typically break quite as much. Now, Shi Yu Lin. Quick putt down the slope and just didn't take enough borrow. Her caddy has been here with her a number of years now, Marty Lun. So you've got some big raps on Lynn Warren. We were discussing her this morning. Played the LPGA Tour for a few years. Yeah, and surprised that she's lost her full playing status on the LPGA Tour, of course. The US LPGA Tour in Thailand this week. A couple of legs before they go to Singapore next week. On their Asian swing. They also have an Asian swing at the back end of the year. And it is great to have this co-sanctioned event between the ALPG Tour and the LET here at Bonville Golf Resort for the first time. And this is, as we said earlier on, a unique course. The gum trees just seem to tower forever over the top of the fairways. And you can see your ball off the tee at times, just framed beautifully by the gum trees. It's quite remarkable. Some great visuals. Actually, that ball flight to the trees. This is Amy Chu from the Liverpool Golf Club in Sydney. This on the 17th hole. Oh, flirting with disaster there. Well, been a little fortunate for that one to stay up. Just tugged it to the left. Product of Golf New South Wales. Just beside the lilies there, above the, the pond at the par three. 
you can wear your camera out going around here and taking photos of the various shots and the par threes in particular. They're a tremendous grouping of short holes. In 2003, we played the Volvo Trucks Golf Classic on the PGA Tour of Australasia around here. Marcus Fraser shot 23 under par for four rounds and one by eight strokes without hitting a driver all week. It's one of those golf courses that you can be rewarded for being aggressive, but you don't, you don't necessarily have to be. Sasha Person. Tee shot at 17. And nicely judged as well. Just above the hole. Very makeable birdie putt coming up. It's a, very, it's a visually intimidating hole, Warren, that 17th hole. Didn't really get the perspective from the camera angle there, but you've got a big wall that faces you at the end of the water there, and the hole location only 15 feet over that. So, fantastic shot from Person. And you can see around the greens here at the Bonville Golf Resort, you've only got to miss them by a minimal amount, 10, 10 yards, 5 yards sometime, and that ball can roll well off the green into some precarious positions, sometimes even lost ball. And you can see the flag there as well. Nor'easter getting up during the afternoon, which will make things trying for the players. As we look at things here at the par 3 11th, the wind pretty much straight back into their face. 133 metres up the hill. So you've got 17, which we just saw playing straight down the hill. The 8th and the 11th play straight up the hill. You see that T marker behind the green, 148 from the back. It's 133 metres from where the players are playing from today. The whole location, 25 metres on and only five from the right. This is Skarpnjord, winner of the Oates Victorian Open a few years ago, and her fiancé, Richard Green, just happened to win the same week, the same golf course, at virtually the same time. That's a pretty rare feat in the world of golf, isn't it? Yeah, well, I remember the closest being a family affair. I remember David Duval won the Players' Championship at Sawgrass, and his dad won that same day on the Champions Tour. But as far as a golfing couple is concerned, I have a hard time recalling anything coming close to that feat. It might be a one-off. Now, Lynn. Tee shot here at the par 3, 11th. And it was certainly on track, but she'll have one of those putts we mentioned on these magnificent Bermuda greens here at Bonneville Golf Resort that above the hole, and if it does get down grain, because naturally enough with Bermuda greens, you do get a little bit of grain in the putting surface. You can have some quick putts, but conversely, up the hill can be a putt you need to give a real whack to. Now, Rebecca Artis. Going along well today. Two under par through eight holes. A little glimpse of her husband there, Jeff. He's been caddying for Rebecca for the last six years on tour. He was on the bag when she had her most recent win at the Aberdeen Asset Management Ladies Scottish Open back in 2015. And Nura Komulainen on the right rough. Here at nine, par four, measuring just over 300 metres, but uphill second shot, catching them out distance-wise. And as we mentioned, that breeze at the moment, the ninth facing back into it and just not getting enough club. This Isabel Boy now, the 28-year-old from Marseille, south of France, at one under par. Can she learn from her playing partner's mistakes coming up short? Heavy air too, Warren. Very humid in this part of the world, and she certainly has. Fantastic shot from Boy now. But it's definitely something that the players would have had to factor in during their practice rounds here, the elevation changes and the humidity. So the players there on the short par four. Well, relatively short for the men's game, perhaps not so much for the women's game. With the cross bunkers, you have a choice off the tee, whether to lay up or try and fly a driver over the top of them, but you bring a difficult second into play if you do catch those bunkers. So 
all three players in that particular group deciding to lay up there. Well, it's a very strategic golf course. Mentioned before, Marcus Fraser, an eight-shot winner in a PGA Tour event round here, without hitting one driver, sort of cast my mind back to when Tiger won the British Open, only hitting one driver, and it's almost like a chess game. Almost got to play the hole backwards, standing on the tee. What's the best play off the tee determined by where the hole location is? So at the moment, midway through this third round of the Australian Ladies Classic from Bonville, Celine Boutier, one clear of Holly Clyburn. And as well, Rebecca Artis is there. Five under along with Hannah Green, the two Aussies, and amongst a host of international visitors in this third round of the Australian Ladies Classic. Take a look further down the leaderboard. There are some 17 players under par, so scoring in these breezy and at sometimes drizzly conditions this week. Not that easy to come by. But take your birdies when they present themselves here. Andrea Wong, the American, two under today to get it into red figures. Katie Burnett's name there at the top. Graduate at the University of South Carolina. She has four career top tens on the ladies European tour. Works hard with the coach, Jared Zack at Sea Island. Fantastic golf complex there in the south of Georgia. And a fantastic round from Kristen Stossier. One of two Icelandic ladies to make the cut this weekend. Five under par, 67. Saw Nora Komalainen from Finland playing the ninth hole just before she, one of four Finnish ladies to have made the cut as well, Warren. So a very international flavour here. And obviously golf taking hold in Iceland as well with Dada Stora Johns Dottir at the top of the leaderboard. So Lafia Kristens Dottir there also at one over. Carly Henry, Scottish player. Charlotte Thompson, Shimela Nicolette and Manon Molay also at one over through 13 in this third round. Sweden, the United States, Finland, Iceland, India, Scotland all being represented. So the good word about the Bonville Golf Resort is going to be spread all around the world. Take you out to the 10th. Jenny Hagland at the par five. Just over reading that one a touch. Pace was good. Last week at the ISPS Honda Australian Women's Open, Jenny Hagland won a Genesis for a hole in one at Kuyonga. Four hole in ones she's had, but first prize she's won and a beauty at that. Well, that'll get your motor running in a hurry. <laughs> so it's been a Fantastic trip out to Australia for the Swede. Top 50 on the Ladies European Tour Order of Merit in 2017. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool getting that shipped back home and driving up to mum and dad's place. Hey, look what I got. This professional golf thing seems to be working out, Jenny. <laughs> Took all of about 10 seconds to get that as well. Just so tranquil and serene, the surroundings here at the Bonville Golf Resort. Mentioned that it opened back in 1992, but they've won a slew of awards here over the years. Chef's Hat Restaurants and Australia's most beautiful golf resort, 14 years running. Wonderful place to come and play golf. Ranked in the top 50 of Australian courses also. We are talking about the breeds a moment ago. You could see the flag just a second ago just hanging limply there and... With the size of the trees here, there'll be pockets of the course where you won't be able to feel the breeze at all on the tee, which will be a real factor for the players. Yeah, I think that's why we've seen... Uh, it's a good point, because I think it's why we've seen a lot of the players misjudge the distances on their approach shots. And even, even when the wind isn't that strong, it tends to swirl a little bit amongst the 
these high gum trees around here. This is, we're looking at the 18th green, the par five, fantastic hole, reminiscent of the approach to some of the greens at Augusta National. Tee shot somewhat like the 10th at Augusta National over the hill. Great amphitheater. This is Aturios from Spain. Couple over on her round. She's at plus six. Ooh. Not a good way to finish. Just a little too much speed on the high side. Lips it out. Our, you, we saw the koala before Warren. Our commentary box just situated to the side of 18. Here we've got a kookaburra who's just been hanging out about 15, 20 feet from our commentary box. So plenty of wildlife around. Some great scenery. Great oh, for the fans out here. A oh, real treat for the European players. Come down to a magnificent part of the world. Almost like an old growth forest around parts of Bonneville here. The size of the trees. Is that unique in the world of Australian golf? Perhaps unique right around the globe to courses we see as we go back to Rebecca Artis. Saw her approach coming up short in the bunker and unfortunately fails to get it up and down. That's a drop stroke. An opening nine of one under par. So she's back at minus four. Leaves Hannah Green as the leading Australian at the moment at five under par. Boutier in sole possession of that lead at eight under. Some of the earlier groups completing their rounds here at Bonneville Golf Resort in this third round of the Australian Ladies Classic. So nice to be back on the north coast of New South Wales. And for the moment, the weather doing the right thing by us with the rain holding off. The players haven't had to get the, the wet weather gear out because the last thing you want to do when the humidity is 90% is put rain gear on. That's a just a nightmare, isn't it? It certainly is, especially when it's on and off as well. You don't really know what to do. And well, there's one extra way to get a little bit of distance, Warren. Just take it along the cart path. Yeah, just catch the speed slot. Right, back to Jenny Hagland. All in one last week at Kiyonga. Can she replicate that here at number 11 at Bonville? No, she can't. Got the distance right, but... Just lost the radar a little bit. Fairly straightforward chip from there. First of the par threes on the back nine here at Bonville. Playing alongside Jenny Hagland, Katie Burnett and Ursula Wickstrom. And this is Jenny Hagland. Breeze here at 11, into and off the right-hand side. And perhaps just turning it over fractionally on the breeze, although that flag fairly steady at the moment. A nice tee shot by Hagland all the same. Birdie putt coming up at the first of the par threes here on the back nine. Caroline Headwall for a birdie at 17. Stalwart of the European Solheim Cup team throughout the years. Prolific winner on the ladies European tour. Has been struggling the past 12 to 18 months. Hoping to find some form out here in Australia. Oh, she's enjoying a time here. Playing alongside the rookie Australian pro, pro Emily McLennan there. Head wall at even par on the day. Even par on the championship. Hannah Green at the seventh hole. Rolls the ball beautifully, Hannah Green. Cross-handed. Her boyfriend, Jared Felton, defending his title at the New Zealand PGA this week and shot a round of seven under par 64 over there yesterday. So... I'm sure there's a battle for bragging rights this week going on, Warren. 
Nice four at the par five seventh there for Hannah Green. Yes, wouldn't it be something? Speaking of couples, as you mentioned a moment ago, if they were to win on either side of the ditch. Well, it's been a tough start for Nana Madsen. A couple over par on her round. She's at minus two, minus eight leading this, so only six strokes behind. Daniela, Daniela Honquist. Yes. Sorry, Warren, the 29-year-old Swede. That's at the ninth hole and a fantastic shot we saw in the earlier group of artists. A couple of players coming up well short. So the graduate from University of California, Berkeley, has a good opportunity for a birdie there. Now Rebecca Artis with a three wood out. There's par five, tenth hole. Good opportunity on this 10th hole to get back that drop shot at number nine. Good tee shot there from Artis down the left-hand side. A lot of water comes into play around here, and that's one of those things we were referencing earlier. You can be aggressive and take it on and be rewarded for some good aggressive shots, but you can certainly find plenty of trouble around here at Bonville. But it's certainly a very fair layout, playable for everyone. That's a view from the clubhouse back down, the 18th hole, the opening hole there, just on the right of your picture. And you can certainly get a good idea of not just the elevation changes, but a lot of dog legs around here as well. 18 dog legging to the left, first hole, dog leg right. So really have to be able to shape the ball both ways. Very much a thinking player's course. Great shot there on. 17 for Brianna Gill. Staying with fellow Australian pro Tamara Johns this week. And the players able to use carts this week to get themselves around this layout at Bonville. As we go back to 11, and Jenny Hagland, this for birdie. Should point out this very hilly layout. Certainly a good walk around here. Now Jenny Hagland is to move into the top 10. Downhill, breaking a little bit left to right. The feeling Jenny Hagland likes par threes. Three birdies, two bogeys in her round so far. She moves to two under with seven to play. Six back from our Leader, Celine Boutier. If you can get it to perhaps a four or five under by the end of this third round, you never know, with a bit of weather around, what might happen to the leaders before the day is out. For a par on number 11, Katie Burnett. And she has one of the great Swedish players there in the left-hand side of your picture on her bag. This week and has been for quite a while. Sophie Gustafsson won a multitude of events on the ladies European tour, the LPGA tour. Played a ton of Solheim Cups. And one of those four Finnish ladies who have made the cut this weekend, Wick, uh, Wickstrom. Just for a par after missing the green right on 11. Good up and down. And they will head off to the par for 12th. One of the more difficult holes on the course here at Bonville. Valdis Johns dot here on the tee at nine. Janice carrying it over the cross bunkers there. Leave herself just a flick of a sand wedge into this green, slightly uphill second shot. I'd be interested to have it. A chat to John Stottier. She's a uh, big Manchester United fan. I'm a Manchester City fan. We could have a few things to discuss there. Mm. 
might break out into something more than a discussion. Well, she does do karate, so uh, maybe yeah. we won't. You're in trouble. <laughs> oh. Fantastic approach to 18 there. We haven't seen too many balls close to that whole location today. Meant the reference before that whole location on the left and the ball tends to sit below your feet on a downslope. Really conducive to a fade, yet you've got to hit a draw in there. So that's a wonderful approach into 18. Whitney Hillier there from Western Australia. Been playing on the ladies European tour for the past three or four years. Contemporary of Minji Lee, they came through at the same time. I was fortunate a number of years ago now at the Perth International to play in the prime round with Andrew Dote, regular on the men's European tour, and our playing partners that day, Whitney Hillier and Minji Lee, when they were still amateurs. I remember that. I remember working that week with you, Warren. I was driving around the golf course and saw that. I think the girls were very intimidated by your presence from memory. Not from my golf, <laughs> let me tell you. It was a bit shabby that day. Up there in the trees. Oh, look. What have we spied here? There's a good find by our cameraman here at Bonville. A koala. A little mid-afternoon nap. Trying to stay out of the, the wet weather as well. Just tucked up there high in the branches. Boy, you could climb a long way up if you're a koala around here. They've got the best vantage points around this golf course. Koalas, kookaburras, kangaroos. We've seen them all this morning. Looking down on the 18th, the par five. Tommy Lane in there. That was her second into the 10th. The par five, so in good position and up and down. Should be a fairly straightforward up and down, one would think, for a birdie to pick up a stroke. Recently married. Rebecca Artis just pacing off what she has here for her second at the 10th. Plays only 434 metres, but with that water short right of the green, you have a choice to make as far as what you're going to do. Spent the early years of her professional golf career playing her trade in Europe, Rebecca Artis. The last couple of years has played the Symmetra Tour over in the United States, trying to gain access to the lucrative LPGA Tour, but just hasn't quite broken through. Spend more time playing on the Ladies European Tour in 2018. Solid player, had a great amateur career. Helsingborg Open winner in 2013. Mentioned that Scottish Women's Open win in 2015. Here's her third shot on 10. Laid up with her second. There's an island patch of fairway you can see there that Artis was coming from, from that left portion of the fairway. Got it above the hole there. It'll be a, a pretty quick putt coming back down the slope here at Bonville. Yeah, pretty brave player to leave that one underneath the hole, though, with the water lurking short of the green. Now the 23-year-old Dane... Anna Madsen, this is her approach up the hill to nine. We've seen a couple of good shots in here. We've also seen a couple come up short in that bunker. Represented Denmark at the Olympic Games in 2016. And in the same year, she won the Tip Sport Ladies Golf Masters in the Czech Republic for her maiden Ladies European Tour win. She's gone a little long there on nine, so very difficult for these players to judge the distance correctly. Yeah, back over to 18. You saw some pretty nice approaches here with their third at the par five. A 
Rita and Ziegler. Happy with that one. Finishes off with a birdie. Same country as Marianne Scarp, Nord from Norway. Some fantastic players coming from not just the Northern Hemisphere, but well north too. Iceland, Norway, Finland. Well, you have to consider, of course, the golf season doesn't run all that long, given the uh, lack of daylight at this time of the year and also the frozen ground. <laughs> it might be a, a four and a half to five month season at most they in might, different parts. They may make up for it in those summer months with 24 hour sunlight. They might get three or four rounds in, perhaps more per day. You could play 72. I could. You'd want to be fit. Some people could, yes. You'd want to be fit to play 72, but I guess you could. One thing you don't really want to do at Bonville is leave the ball above the hole. Very difficult to get the speed right. And with the break slopes in these greens certainly have nightmares trying to lag the ball down there close. Madsen had three wins last year on the Symmetra Tour Warren over in the United States, so she'll be playing the majority of her golf this year on the LPGA Tour. Back to her, this is Whitney Hillier. Tapping in on number 11. And she walks off to the difficult par for 12th. Take a look at the leaderboard as things stand at the moment. And Celine Boutier, three under today, so our leader after two rounds. Maintaining that one-shot advantage over Holly Clyburn. Olivia Cowan is there at seven under, one under today. Hannah Green, not too far back in fourth place on track for another good finish on this swing here in Australia between the Australian Women's Open last week at Kuyonga and also this first or rather third round of the Australian Ladies Classic at Bonville Golf Resort. Rebecca Artis very much in the reckoning as well. Daniela Holmquist from Sweden is there. And four under Katie Burnett, Paulus Jons Dottier. She's also there at three. And Jenny Hagland, one under today through 11, is two under for the tournament. On the leaderboard, Marta Sands Barrio. She's at two under. Some 15 players at the moment, under par. Just proving that it's no snack around here. You've got to play some very good golf to be in red figures at Bonville this week. It's just so much trouble that awaits around here, Warren. There are a lot of birdie holes, but it's very difficult to keep those blemishes off your scorecard. Christian Stott here. 67, low round of the day. Equal course record, actually. Holly Clyburn with that 67 on day one was the new course record. Kylie Henry, Scotland going along very well. And a good opportunity to birdie the last hole, the par five, to move it to level par and inside the top 20. Laura Davies there, one over through 12 today after being even par through the midway point of the tournament. This Australian Ladies Classic. Chance to, on the way home, make a move with par five still to come. And she's a long hitter. We've known that for so long now. At par fives at 14 and also 18. Laura can definitely get home. She knocks one over the hill at 18. Pretty sure she still just bangs up a little bit of turf. No tee required. Drops the ball down on top of it. And Gives it a rip. Hall of Fame member. What a career for Dame Laura Davies. 80 wins. 84 professional wins. Third only to Annika Sorenstam and Kathy Whitworth. Four majors, 20 victories on the LPGA Tour. Stunning career. And she, you, Lynn, there. Little tie for 21st at the moment. And a very good round from Carly Booth from Scotland. Two under par, just scraped through the cut line. Good to see Carly playing well today. One of the fittest girls out here on tour. A 
fans of all shapes and sizes. They're enjoying the action at Bonville. This is Bonville Golf Resort, this third round of the Australian Ladies Classic. Warren Smith and Ewan Porter in the commentary position with you. Annabelle Rowley out there with some interviews coming throughout the afternoon as players complete their third rounds. At the moment, it's Celine Boutier on top, leading by one from this player, Holly Clyburn. Tapping in for a par there at number eight. So all the groups have gone through the eighth hole. Level par on the day, she's minus eight. 67-69 the opening two rounds. Won the New South Wales Women's Open back in 2015. And interestingly enough, we'll be defending her title in 2018. That next week. Yeah, next week, of course, at Coffs Harbour. Hasn't been played for the last couple of years, the New South Wales Open. She'll be there defending. In the form she's in, she'll give it a real shake at making a great fist of that defence as well. Carolyn Headwell just prowling this particular putt. Playing with Hannah Burke and Emily McLennan. Years ago, watching the Solheim Cup and Caroline Headwall was really spearheading that European challenge. Spiritual leader of the team. She had a great round today, minus three, recapturing some of that form. This to get into red figures. This for a round of 68. And, well, to miss read, but good speed. And that position there, two putts, not a bad effort. Well done. Good round. 69 for Headwall. Gee, there's some good golf in this part of the world, not just here, but Coffs Harbour Golf Club, where they're playing next week. Definitely a bucket list destination for golfers, that's for sure. Alongside Carolyn Headwall, Emily McLennan. Or rather, Anna Burke. Putting up the hill for a birdie. This to shoot 71. One under par. No, that one looked good till she hit it, Warren. Just never really online, or the length, I guess, was okay. Still, good round. All things considered, 72. This is Emily McLennan putting from above the hole. Now, she would have got a good read there from Burke. Even though it's from the opposite side, she'd know that that ball wants to fall to the right. It's going to be pretty quick. It's been a tough day. Lunch will be a bit sweeter if she rolls this in using the claw grip. Left to right, slightly down the slope. Beautiful putt. And drops in. Great way to finish in front of the large gallery at 18. Let's go to our final grouping of the day. Olivia Cowan, Celine Boutier and Holly Clyburn made their way to the par 4 ninth, just over 300 metres. Those cross bunkers. The vast majority of the field choosing to lay up, of course, is playing back into the breeze. Destined to be a golfer, Olivia Cowan, her father, an English born professional golfer, resides in Germany these days. Five top tens in a couple of years on tour. Our leader. It's 220 metres. Slightly uphill and into the breeze to carry the last of those bunkers. That one that Lydia is just short of. So 
205 metres to knock it into that. She's judged her distance beautifully. Holly Clyburn, the longest of the three, taking the long iron out. Two-time Curtis Cup member. About 26th at the 2012 British Women's Open as an amateur, which was a fantastic effort. Holly Clyburn, she turned professional later that year. And a fair indication as well as to the length that she has off the team, taking in just a long iron, taking up the right-hand side, taking those bunkers well out of play, and she'll have maybe as much as a, a nine or eight iron in to this shorter par four. These three players all going along very steadily today. Doing their best to separate themselves from the field. It is tight at the top. Good battle we have here. The first Australian Ladies Classic. Longville Golf Resort. Find yourself in the right portion of the green. Stephanie Bunke there. Young amateur who was been doing great things. The winner of the Port Phillip Open amateur. Oh. Moved up to the Victorian amateur not that long ago. Been a very busy time for the leading Australians right around the country. With the Australian amateur, the New South Wales amateur being played just recently. Of course, the Australian amateur was held over at Lake Caranup where the Australian men's tour visited just a couple of weeks ago for the Super 6 Perth event. Had a couple of Japanese winners in the Australian amateur, didn't they? Both men's and women's. Yes. Bit of a sahi flowing that evening, no doubt. Laura Davies. A little interesting fact about Laura Davies. Back in 1994, became the first golfer, male or female, to win tournaments on five continents in one year. Incredible stuff from Laura Davies. Former world number one. Played 12 Solheim Cups. She likes this as well. And oh. with good reason. Laura Davies from off the back edge of the green makes a bomb. Still loves playing the game. See a little profile there. 54 years old. 33 years a professional golfer. And at the height of her game, she was comfortably the best player in the world, just dominating, as most of the big hitters do. If you find yourself as uh, one of the top two or three players on either the men or the women's game, invariably you hit the ball a long, long way. That's just an inescapable fact. It has been for a long time. Back when I was a little whippersnapper, Warren, I remember watching the Australian skins game that they used to have on the schedule here, and she teed it up alongside John Daly. Now, you want to talk about a couple of hours of entertainment watching Laura Davies and John Daly. Just teeing it high and letting it fly. Our second shot here at nine for Holly Clyburn. Approach up the hill, 135 metres. Like she's brought this in with some height. Just a little bit right of the flag, but a good shot nonetheless. 25 feet for a birdie. That put her in a tie with Boutier. Now Olivia Cowan. Former Portuguese and Spanish amateur champion. Also had three wins in 2015 on the Ladies European Tour Access Series, which is the feeder or the development tour for the Ladies European Tour. Mentioned her father is a golf professional as well. Got the distance right, just pulled that a little bit to the left. 30 feet for a birdie. He's currently two strokes behind this lady. 
Celine Boutier, the former Blue Devil. Attended Duke College, famous sporting institution in the US, in the world of the NCAA sporting realm. Around about 95 metres in here. And the best of the three approach shots we saw from our final group of the day. So another chance for our leader. Birdie coming up and possibly a two-shot lead as they make the turn. Three under par today. The low round of the day belongs to Kristen Stottier, an Icelandic woman with a five under par of 67. Go over to 10, par 5, and here's Hannah Green. There's a wood in hand, little fade. And that one coming up short might be an issue for Hannah Green. Looked to be a pretty poor strike for a player of her standard. Perhaps can't believe. She hit that as poorly as she did. Playing alongside her, Valis Johns Dottier. A terrific shot here from a long way out. Judged a tee shot beautifully. Maximised the distance. Has a long eagle attempt coming up back down the hill. So we are midway through. This third round of the Australian Ladies Classic here at Bonville Golf Resort. And at the moment, it's the Frenchwoman, Celine Boutier. One stroke leader over Holly Clyburn. Olivia Cowan makes it an all European fair at the top of the leaderboard. Hannah Green is there. With her issues potentially there at 10. We'll come back to see what's happening with Hannah on course. Rebecca Artis through 10 is one under today. And four under for the tournaments. Daniela Holmquist, Valis Johns Dottier, also there at four under here at Bonville. I trust you're enjoying the action right around Australia and indeed right around the world. Some of the best female players in the world in action on the north coast of New South Wales. Still 15 players under par in red figures here with some holes to play in round three. This Australian Ladies Classic, Laura Davies. Off the back of that big putt we saw a moment ago, has got it back to even par through 13. 13 countries represented in those top 18 names, Warren. That's about as international a mix as you can get. Sarah Schober there from Austria. One under par. Charlotte Thompson, the English woman. Under par in her day, playing the par 5 18th. Casey Danielson from the USA came here with big hopes this week. Currently in 22nd place. Plus one on the tournament. The leading group on the ninth. Celine Boutier. She was rewarded for aggressive play off the tee. Left herself 30 or 40 metres shorter than her playing partners and was able to take advantage and knocking that second shot to about 10 feet. This putt should theoretically move slightly from her left to right with the green sloping from back to front while she looks at that putt. This is our second round leader, currently one stroke behind Boutier, Holly Clyburn. We're in a temporary tie for the lead and it's a fantastic effort just missing on the low side. A rock solid par though for Holly Clyburn. Through the path here for Celine. Boutier, our leader, by one, trying to double that advantage with this putt. Underneath the hole. And a putt you could certainly attack. If 
for a two-stroke lead. This third round of the Australian Ladies Classic, Celine Boutier. And she makes it. Nicely judged. She gets to double figures under par and leads by two. Four under par on the round in the final group. The best score today, minus five. She's currently got the second best score of the day. We go to the 10th. There's par five. That is John's dot here. See how quick that is, that second part of the travel towards the hole there. She can't believe it skated by as much as it did, but it's all right to attack the par five, but if you get it in the wrong spot, you can leave yourself a difficult third, and that was always going to be tough to get that one close. So still some three to four metres for birdie. That's where the strategy really comes into it, Warren. Do you have a go at the green in two, knowing that the best you can do is the back edge and 70 feet down the hill, or do you lay up and leave yourself 70, 80 yards for your approach, knowing that you've, you may have a better chance of getting it closer to the hole from 70 or 80 yards. It was Zach Johnson when he won the 2007 US Masters. Four par fives around Augusta National. It never went for one of them in two in all four rounds. 16 times he laid up, made 11 birdies. David Toms when he beat Phil Mickelson to win a US PGA, famously laying up at the closing par four 18th. Realised he couldn't really get it close for the attack to go over the water. Atlanta Athletic Club. That's the one. 2001. Great two putt from John's dot here. Gets a birdie at number 10. Would have been a little disappointed. Maybe an understatement there. Would have been grossly disappointed with a three putt par. Instead, she walks off rather chuffed. See how Hannah Green can fare here. Ball finishing just on the top of that slope. We saw how quick that second part of the travel on the part of John's daughter you was, so this will be pretty quick. Would have been paying close attention to John's daughter, her, her putt down the hill. Gee, she putts well, Hannah Green, Warren. She does a lot of things well. <laughs> what a future she has. See her on the US LPGA Tour throughout the season once they head back to the mainland after their Bahamas and then to Australia with the Australian Women's Open. Two-week swing in Asia before they head back to the mainland. I think she'll open some eyes in the US in 2018. Already has 11th in the Bahamas in the opening event, third last week at the Australian Women's Open. You've got to think Hannah Green could very well win a title on debut in 2018. Nana Madsen to get to three under. For those some six and seven shots back, these have to go in, and that was a pretty poor read. She slams the putter down on the ground, but there's nothing wrong with the putting surfaces here at Bonville. I can tell you there was, that ball didn't bobble a millimeter and she graduated from the university of south carolina which have a lot of bermuda and three to eight grains so she should be used to these putting surfaces six under four under and two under those three players respectively it clears the way for our final group of the day at the top of the leaderboard celine boutier coming off yet another birdie four under through the Opening nine holes today to be a 10 under and a two shot leader over Holly Clyburn and the third player in this group, Olivia Cowan. Clyburn with a three wood. See most players taking three wood from the 10th tee. 
despite the fact it is a par five. Slightly down breeze, helping off the right-hand side here at 10 today, and the run out, 234 metres from the tee where the ladies are playing it from this week. So down breeze, certainly a player of Clyburn's length, well within reach. So the longer players taking a three-wood off that tee to take the water out of play, then it gives them an option, of course, potentially of going for the green in two if they can knock it down there close enough to the edge of the run out or... Do they play conservatively and try and leave it under the hole with a flip wedge for their third? As much as I love Bonville, I've never been a fan of par fives where you can't take a driver, where you can't take it on, where, is it, where, where there's a forced run out, where you have to lay up, my opinion, on a par five. You should be able to attack it and be rewarded for a big hit, a big straight hit. But there on number 10, everyone forced to hit to the same position and then it's you either lay up or you go for it if you're long enough. You could try and carry the water, but it's about 260 to carry the water. I don't know. Maybe Laura in her day. Mm, maybe, yeah. We really came out of her shoes on one, perhaps. Used to tee it up on pencils, Laura Davies, when she wanted to give it a rip. That's from one extreme to the other, isn't it, for a player who teed it up without a tee. Just bumped a little bit of turf up. Gets that driver, gives it a thump into the ground and puts the ball on top of that and... It's very effective. We're yeah. looking at Daniela Holmquist on 11. 40 feet for a birdie uphill, left to right. Going along nicely today, one under par. She's at four under par, but with Boutier going along so well, currently at minus 10, really needs to get a bit of a wriggle on if she wants to keep pace. Good putt, good speed. We head back over to 10. The first of three par fives on the back nine. And Celine Boutier, a little bit wide off the tee here. Now, assuming she's got a shot, maybe somewhat of a blessing in disguise because it's going to take going for the green out of the equation and now she can lay up to perhaps her favourite distance. Now, that's assuming she has got a shot. It looks like from that camera angle, she does have a gap through the trees there. And I'd say she's in consultation with her caddy there at the moment, trying to figure out that precise layup distance. You'd think she, from that position there, she currently has about 210, 220 metres to the flag. So you would think a shot of around 140, 150 metres from here is what's required to get into the ideal position for a third shot. It's been flawless golf from her so far. Birdies at one, four, seven. And of course, we saw a moment ago at the short par four ninth. And she's decided to go with an iron, so it will be a layup to that island portion of fairway between the two hazards here at 10. What do you do in this position, Warren? You just pick an intermediate target, pick a little spot in front of you between the trees? Do you aim at a tree knowing that you won't hit it straight? What's the, what's the thought process? Well, the key is to make sure you have a very definite target in your mind, and perhaps a kookaburra in the middle of the fairway might have been her target, not too far from the cooker there. Very kind of him to give her a, a little aiming point. Clyburn's going for it, Warren. Got the wood in hand. 200 metres up the hill. It's a fairly daunting shot. A couple of bodies of water, water, and only got to slightly miss hit it up the hill, and that water short definitely comes into play. That's not a miss hit. Look for this to be somewhere near the back of the green. It's an excellent shot. It's going to be a very difficult lag putt from there, but any time you've got a putter in hand on a par five for two, you're pretty pleased.
Cowan. 195 metres. Up the hill. Great angle from the left side of the fairway. Five wood in hand. This is a good looking line. It's a little lower than Clyburn's. Oh, just cleared the bunker in the short right portion of this green at 10. A little bit of draw on the breeze feeding up to the back section of the green. That'll be quite an adventure, that part as well. But it's for an eagle. Yeah, that's a fantastic shot. Looked like the ball was slightly below her feet, so that was never going to be an easy task to get it near the hole. So after being in trouble off the tee, a conservative play for Celine Boutier. Shows her spot in the fairway, and as we saw. The kookaburra has flown away. Now Shamila Nicolette. Trying to finish out here at 18. Interesting to note there, the teaching professional here at Ponville Golf Resort, Richie Gallachin, on her bag this week. Richie nice is a very some, good player in his own right. Nice to have some local knowledge on the bag when you come to a new course. It's very much the case for the vast majority of the field here. I don't know how many of them would have seen Bonneville in the past. Whitney Hillier. Couple over through two rounds. Two over on today's round. No mistake there, though, with a short putt at 18. It'll be hugs all round. And a repair to the clubhouse to consider what happened through 18 holes here today. Here is Christina Kim. Love Christina Kim's attitude from San Jose in California, makes a home in Florida these days, has three LPGA Tour wins, but going to be playing the majority of her golf on the Ladies European Tour and just has a great perspective on life. Looking forward to travelling the world and still being able to do something she loves. And I have a fair idea what she said then. She's always fairly demonstrative, isn't she? Been known to wear a heart on a sleeve at times. Hard breaking putt though. That snapped a long way from left to right in that last metre or so. Boutier after the layup. On 10. This is the third shot. Pretty well executed. Fairly similar position to where we saw Hannah Green hole her birdie putt. Boutier will have that to go minus five for the day through ten holes. Just looking down on the scene here from the clubhouse at the 18th at Bonville. And that is quite a view. Find yourself a spot on the veranda after battling 18 with against your your partners and your opponents here. That's Christina Kim taps in. It's all business today, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Looks very focused. A friend of mine back home watching Luke Dudman. Big fan of Christina Kim. Wanted to give a big shout out to Luke. Big Christina Kim fan. Oh, here's Cowan. We saw her second shot into the 10th and going for this green you're playing from down below on the fairway up to an elevated green it's always going to be difficult especially with the wood in hand to get the ball anywhere near that hole location so she's actually done well to keep it on this part of the green 45 50 feet left to right breaking putt and for the moment if she were to hold it, this would put her in outright second at minus nine. Realistically, we'd love to get this in a three-foot circle of the hole. And right on cube, she does exactly that. Great putt. I 
one of the challenges, of course, of being a young professional making your way around the world, the different types of turf you play off. You can go through, of course, the fescue of the Lynx in the, in the UK, you come to this part of the world. You get a mix, of course, down on the sand belt in Melbourne. You have the fine bent grass greens and cooch fairways. Bermuda greens, as it gets warmer here, similar conditions to what the players face in Florida and parts in the southern United States. It's Clyburn from off the back edge. This gets very quick as it comes down the slope here. And another very nicely judged putt. Brilliant lag. And just elaborating on your point there, Warren, that's something that a lot of people don't really understand about the life of a professional golfer, the adjustments that you have to make on a, on a weekly basis. And it's not just dealing with a warm climate, a cool climate and different grasses, but you've actually got to adjust your equipment, uh, your preparation, the way you practice to deal with all of those factors, you know, add in all the travel and those other elements. It, it's really tricky. It, it, that's why it takes some people longer to mature as a, as a professional golfer. Um, you get to know the, the courses, the places you enjoy going, the places that you feel most comfortable with. Now this for Birdie. After laying up with her second, Boutier a little wide with her approach. It will be just a par five. At 10 for our leader, who has a two-shot advantage at the moment. I would think Holly Clyburn will be able to tap her birdie putt in to move within one of Boutier. This is Cowan to get to minus eight. Couple under on her round. Two behind Boutier. So you've got Boutier four under for the round. Cowan two under for the round. Clyburn now one under for the round. That's very good going for the three players, really, under the most pressure. They were the ones starting out that everyone was chasing. Doing a great job so far. They'll turn back into the breeze here at Bonville with the short par 3, 11th. And that lead has been halved. Celine Boutier now just one clear of Holly Clyburn after Clyburn makes birdie at the par 5, 10th. There's our leaderboard. Olivia Cowan in third place. The German there too clear of Hannah Green, who, after being in the bunker for two on 10, was able to get up and down for birdie. Baddus Johns Dottier is also there at five under. Daniela Holmquist, Katie Burnett, Rebecca Artis. The two Australians on our first page of the leaderboard, even par through 11. Some seven behind Celine Boutier in this third round of the Australian Ladies Classic. Florentina Parker, one of the players there at one under. Three holes to play in her third round. Sarah Schober, the Austrian, Laura Davies there also. Laura Komulainen. So there's now 17 players who are at one under or better. Caroline Hedwell, the first of the players at even par. of nationalities on that particular page on the leaderboard as well as we get into the players midfield here in this third round. Really highlights the, glo the global nature of the game. Sport played all over the world no matter the climates and played very well. That's Jean Zdottier standing on the 12th tee, the par four. 85 metres playing with Hannah Green elevated tee and you can see in your picture there the breeze just starting to pick up a little forecasted to gust up to 20 kilometres per hour today this is Sarah Kemp back on the ladies European tour having spent eight seasons playing on the old PGA tour Sarah went to the same high school I attended in Devon Sports High and the Sutherland Shire region. 
Great girl, Sarah. Coached in recent times by John Sirhan at the St Michael's Golf Club. On the eastern beaches of Sydney, right next door to the coast. Golf Club, a part of the world that you know pretty well, Ewan. I certainly do. Just happened to play golf next door at New South Wales the other day. Beautiful stretch of golf along the ocean there. Some of the most wonderful views you find anywhere in the world. Scene this is beautiful Bonville Golf Resort. In the third round of the Australian Ladies Classic. Par four 16th. Ian Bonquist. A couple over today. Australia Sarah Kemp and this woman Florentina Parker. I get up here at Bonville. The elevation, the more exposed it is. And saw a dead calm less than an hour ago. Easy to see that the wind has started gusting there on 16. The players are going to have to factor in coming down the stretch here on Saturday. A good lag there. Boquist. Swedish tennis players throughout the years, Warren, but uh, they're certainly coming to the fore in the game of golf in recent times. It's amazing how the Europeans, who weren't factors, of course, through the 50s and 60s, by the time the 70s had rolled around, they had become very proficient golfers, tennis players, really bursting onto the scene in both of the predominantly summer sports as Olivia Cowan. Shot here at the par 3, 11th. Playing back into the breeze. Tough to get it all the way back to that flag. That's a nice shot from Cowart. Commercially sound. 25 feet left of the hole. See quite a few of these hole locations today tucked in the sides of the greens. And if you happen to short side yourself around here at Bonville, not only can the ball take some Nasty bounce as well off the green, but very difficult to get the ball up and down. Hence why you'll see quite a few of these players playing safely away from the hole where Holly Clyburn looks like she's heading with her tee shot, trying to use a little local knowledge off the slope. And it comes down just a little bit. Certainly got the distance right, but that's not a bad miss. To our leader, Celine Boutier, coming off a par at 10 while her playing partners were able to both make birdie. Looks like Boutier is taking a little more aggressive line. Flighted it in lower there, which is the right idea, playing back into the breeze. A little short, but not a bad shot. Par threes around here. You make par on each one of them, you're very happy. You're almost gaining a stroke on average to the field. Yeah, that would be a good result. Make par at each of the par threes. We go down to 18. Look at this pin today. Devilish pin position. Stephanie Nah. Oh, only just clearing the water there. That is a complete miss hit. What a great camera angle that was for Stephanie Nair. Did well at the ISPS Honda Women's Australian Open last week. She's not happy with that, but she's playing her third from about 40 yards. Could have very easily been four from about 100. She also made a hole in one at Kuyonga last week. Parker on 16 today. Yeah. It's that way. In the last year, the Mediterranean Ladies Open. We 
go back to the 12th and Hannah Green. Typical par four today. The tee shot back into the breeze off the left hand side, playing slightly down breeze. With their second shot to the green. We'll head back over to 11. Looks like Clyburn's going to be first to play. She's off the green, despite the fact that Booty is furthest away from the hole. Good idea leaving the flag stick in here, coming down the hill. You see the fringe just in front of her ball. She's coming from the second cut, so she has a couple of different options here, but being straight down the hill, she really only needs to get this rolling just onto the putting surface, and gravity should take it the rest of the way. If she were to hold this, we'll put her in a tie for the lead at 10 under par with Boutier. Pretty good effort there after coming through that little fringe of rough. The back left section of the green here at 11. Are you a pin in or pin out man in regards to shots like that? Or does it just depend on the situation? I've always been the pin in. I know a lot of people who are confident love having the flag stick out when they chip. They believe that it gives them more chance for the ball to go in. But to me, it's going to be your saving grace more often than not should the ball hit it. Plus, I've got terrible eyesight. So a bigger target helps. <laughs> Booty air for birdie. One. Slow putt back up the hill here. And that really was a misread there. And coming off the slope, it's going to almost feed back towards her. You don't see that too often. That is still, that's still going. That's still rolling back. That's just, I, I, you can't really explain anything other than that's careless from Boutier. I, I really don't feel like she's looked into that putt hard enough because she should have known that ball's breaking fairly significantly left to right. And there's that big slope there just before the hole. Looks pretty nonplussed about it all, but I don't think she's going to be too happy. Perhaps just a misread of the grain there as well. You can see it looks from this angle here like the grain, the grain goes away from us. So we'll be back into her with that putt. And certainly up the hill. It's a putt you really have to give a firm wrap to to get it to the hole. Cowan just running that one past a metre or so. They've all got some work left there. Thought Cowan was going to mark a ball in front of it then from that angle. I was <laughs> that, that was going to be curious. <laughs> just a little leaf or a little bit of leaf matter blowing onto the green here as the wind gets up. During this mid part of the third round of the Australian Ladies Classic. First time bringing it to you from Bonville Golf Resort. This for par for our leader who will drop a shot. So we'll have a tie at the top of the leaderboard. Boutier falling back to nine under and now shares the lead with Holly Clyburn. And Olivia Cowan, should she tap this one in, will now only be one behind. Got to give props to these ladies, Warren, getting around the course in four to four and a half hours through these first three days. I know they are playing in carts, but it's, it's uh, an easy golf course. A lot of long drives between greens and tees. Confident stroke there from Cowan, wasn't it? Nicely hold and with the aim point method. Without using the fingers on a short putt there, Holly Clyburn just getting a feel through her feet as to the, the lay of the land on this particular putt. Pretty much banging into the back of the cup uphill. Well done. Good three. Joint leader now, Holly Clyburn. Never really delved too deeply into it, but particularly understand that aim point method myself. Needs further investigation before you start expanding on it too greatly. We'll leave the 11th. We'll go to our second last group of the day. 
playing with Nana Manson and Hannah Green is Paulus Johns Dottier. Just off the back edge here at 12. Over there on the hazard line. May well be an issue for Nana Madsen, who might have found the water with her second shot. And that is very much in play. And speaking of water, there's suddenly water everywhere. And there's a little rain squall hits Bonville. And about as hard as we've seen it rain since we've been here today. That's it's over on 12. Not that well. I guess it's probably about a kilometre away from where we are at 18. And here at 18, not a drop of rain. There are 12. Boy, it's coming down quickly. It's lovely weather for these fellas. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, it's not what you want after just hitting your ball into the water as well. Hasn't been a particularly good day so far for Madsen. Couple over par on her round. Centre of Coffs Harbour, only a mere 10, 15 minutes away from here. And when we were on our way to the course this morning, it was bucketing down in Coffs Harbour. We got here and the sun started to appear. So it'll be one or the other at the moment. The squall's coming through. It's fairly well protected at this part of the hinterland here. Fourth shot here for Manson. And taking a drop and she just about holds it for a miraculous par. That is incredible. If you'll escape with just the one drop stroke, and perhaps the hardest hole on the course here at Bonville. She's not happy, Madsen. But uh, I'll tell you what, that could have been a lot worse. Bogey's not too bad an effort. From there, now John's dot here. Chipping from over the back. One under on around. Par four, third shot. Not an easy shot against the grain. Not bad. I mentioned before, once you short side yourself around here at Bonville, can be deadly some of these chips down the hill, but I think a pretty good fist of it right there. Yeah, then find some pretty tight lies as well in the closely known sections around the greens here and the cooch grass. And just getting herself out of the way. And then a Manton taps in for her. Five, that will be her third bogey of the day. The rest have been pars, no birdies in her third round. She's sliding in the wrong direction at a crucial stage of the tournament. We've seen players come from seven, eight, nine shots behind the lead to win tournaments before. Remember, Paul Laurie won the British Open back in 1999, beginning the final round, 10 strokes behind, but Realistically, the players don't want to be any more than about four or five shots at the most behind the lead to think they've got an opportunity to win the golf tournament going into the final round. Paul won the Jean Vanderveld lottery, didn't he? He was the beneficiary of that episode. Hannah Green with the rain top on. A little bit of rain around today. The greens won't be the same pace they were certainly on Thursday for the opening round. They were rolling 11 or ticking over 11 on the old stint meter. You've got to be careful when it starts raining and gets a little wet like this. When you take your practice strokes, it's very easy for a little bit of sand or perhaps some grass to get on your putter face. And that will make significant impact once you strike the ball. It could come off a lot softer, it could go left or right. So you've got to be acutely aware of the putter face being clean when you hit it. It's John's dot here. Makes a fantastic save on 12. She'll remain at six under, only three behind our leaders. It's up and down from the back of the green. Uh, speaking of green, here is Hannah. Born to play the game. You would think Warren with that name. Nathan Green, another one. Had an illustrious career. Richard Green. Opportunity of green and gold in Hannah's future. Nice confident stroke right there. She stays very much in the mix here at Bonville. Seems to be in contention every week, Hannah Green. Last year on the Symmetric Tour, 12 top 10s and three wins. The first foray, full season in America. Just a 
really different. Yeah, that is stunning. We'll go from 12 into 17. Par 3. And Florentina Parker. English player who was even par through her opening two rounds here. This from just on two metres. Nicely hold. Set a cut. Is that perhaps a flash of lightning that caught Florentina's attention as he walked off the green there? Well, the rain has just started coming down here on the 18th. Pretty steadily, I might add. The forecast for a chance of a thunderstorm this afternoon. We were yet to see any signs of that earlier, but hopefully it stays away for the players' sake. playing in this weather, I'm trying to keep everything dry, towels, gloves, umbrellas. Especially if you're close to the clubhouse as well, you know, you haven't got too far to go. As we watch Jenny Hagland here, who's quickly donned the, the rain top. Just for birdie at 14, the par 5. Saved the hole. The tap in for Hagland. Stays there at one under. Caddy's earning their money's worth right now. Four feet down the hill. The Wickstrom is for birdie to get it back to level par. Got to be careful you don't get any water on that. Hotter face. Holds it nicely. Four holes left to battle with the elements. And it really is starting to pour down here at the Bonville Golf Resort. Yes, those weather forecasters occasionally they get it bang on. And they were dead right with what we were expecting here today, it would seem. Burnett, nicely done there at 14. So he's three under and six back from our pair of leaders, Celine Boudier and Holly Clyburn. I think even the Ducks are taking shelter at the moment. So you can see Wickstrom Level par in equal 14th. That means we only have 13 players now, Warren, under par for this tournament. 17 earlier. Becoming a little more difficult late on Saturday here at Bonville. Yes, we're getting into the clubhouse. Four or five under. Hannah Green currently at five under. She has a number of holes to play, though. It's really... Make some ground up of the leaders perhaps coming back to you despite having three par fives on the second nine here at Bonville. This par 72 layout playing at 5,750 metres this week. Andrea Wong on 18. Down the water with his second. To drop it at this point. Fourth shot. This one's squirting a little right. And just a little long. It's now starting to feed back, utilising that slope. So not too bad a shot. Pretty good result, really. Only 10 feet from the hole. Yeah, nice use of that backstop there at 18. As we go over to the 12th, the par four, and looking for the ball, we believe, of Holly Clyburn. 
Yeah, I'm guessing softish conditions just off the fairway would be easy for a ball to embed, or maybe if you lose it in the hazard, uh, it might be gone for good, and that's a real miss off the tee to find that hazard down the right-hand side there. I guess they're trying to potentially here just establish where it did cross the margin of the hazard. Well, it could be an interesting one because if, they, if nobody saw the ball where it finished, she may have to go back to the tee, but if there's in inverted commas, reasonable evidence that the ball did find the hazard, well, then that's fine. She can drop one up there, but someone's got to have had an eye on it to where it did wind up. So this will be... Uh, this could be an interesting situation here developing in the next couple of minutes for Clyburn. Not what you want. Rain starting to come down. Looking for a golf ball in a hazard. Well, especially when you're in a share of the lead. Clyburn. One win on the ladies European tour. The, the Dutch ladies open. Hoping to add another title this week. And a slow start today, bogeys at the first and the third, but bounce back with a birdie at the par five fourth. He also birdied the other par five on the front nine, the seventh, and made it a hat-trick of par five birdies with the four we saw her just a, not that long ago at 10, but has her issues here at 12, and as you can see, she <laughs> was struggling to get back up that slope there from the hazard well below the level of the fairway. At least you can keep a sense of humour. Uh, rules officials with this group. Uh, we'll just see exactly what the situation's going to be with Holly Clyburn. It is hammering down at different parts of the course suddenly. They do have great drainage here at Bonville, so would have to take something fairly awful to take place for any of the greens to begin flooding and play to be halted. So, unfortunately for the players, they're going to have to grind it out in these wet conditions. And, well, looks like Clyburn's heading back to the tee, Warren. Well, that is intriguing. So, unable to establish that the ball actually finished up in the hazard. As, if, as you mentioned, if you don't see it actually enter the hazard, well, there's no guarantee that it did. It could have embedded itself somewhere short of the hazard or just over it into an upslope and in soft conditions. So it's going to be at a cost of a stroke and the distance. She has to go back to the tee to play her third, and this will have a ramifications for our top of the leaderboard. Let's take a look at how things stand at the moment with Clyburn there currently tied for the lead with Celine Boutier, but for how long? Perhaps only as much as the 12th hole because it's going to be tough to make anything more than a double bogey six for Clyburn here in deteriorating conditions at Bonville with the weather really closing in at the moment. Olivia Cowan there in just one stroke back. Valdis Johns Dottier there, the Icelandic player is at six under. Hannah Green is five under with six holes to play in her third round. Daniela Holmquist there on the first page of the leaderboard as well, which also fe features Rebecca Artis. This is the Australian Ladies Classic from Bonville Golf Resort. saw Andrea Wong play her approach shot from the rough after finding the water some 10 feet behind the hole and just marking her ball there so she's missed her par putt. Playing with American Christina Kim. Christina Kim has one win on the ladies European tour at the Italian Women's Open back in 2011. So 
It's been a while between drinks. Last one today. This to finish off. Believe it's for a birdie. Oh no, Christina Kim. Given it the teapot hand on hip a couple of times in recent holes, hasn't she? Nicely hold. Members from the Thai tour here this week. As Kim finish out the rain, continue to come down pretty solidly here at the moment. The good news is when these showers hit, they usually pass just as quickly. So I dare say within five or ten minutes, the rain will have stopped and they'll have the rain gear off and brollies put away. And it's hugs all round at 18. As you can see, the Greens here at Bonneville handling this wet weather very well. Under gloomy sky, suddenly on the north coast of New South Wales, this is the third round of the Australian Ladies Classic being brought to you from Bonneville Golf Resort. A brand new event, co-sanctioned events, in the Australian Ladies Professional Golf Tour and the Ladies European Tour. And that might be an issue once again with that ball off the tee, finding it looked like that area which has the hazard down the right-hand side. We thought it was Holly Clyburn going back to the tee, but it looks like it was Olivia Cowan. So, not too sure what's going on there, but... Whoever it is, they're in trouble on 12. Well, that was definitely Olivia Cowan up there on the tee. And unless the rules have changed, you can't tag team and say, you're going back to hit the tee shot for me. So Olivia Cowan in trouble there off the tee at 12. She was just one back before this hole. From the middle of the fairway, here is Holly Clyburn. There's the full wet weather gear on suddenly. And you can see just a little river of water on that left edge of the green there at 12. Yeah, You've got to feel, Warren, for Olivia Cowan here. Couldn't find a ball off the tee. Now she's... Has she got her ball here? There is a hazard down there. But she can't like believe she, it. Looks like she has got it. So she was playing three off the tee. Unless she can play that from wherever it sits in the hazard there and she's going to t get a distance so you would assume it's playable and this will be her fourth and she's battling at the moment to stay in contact with the leaders given the events here on the 12th we'll go ahead one hole to 13 and here is Hannah Green So they're trying to establish casual water there. But not really sure. Well, trying to decipher what they're doing here. It's obviously wet where her ball is, but a little baffled as to why they'd be looking to drop it in the rough when her ball's on the fairway. So I think she's just going to cop it sweet and hit the ball from the fairway here. Really important. It's almost like a fairway bucket shot when it gets wet like this. Really important to keep your levels. If you dip a little bit into the ball or get slightly steep, it's easy to hit it fat and you'll be cut. You see there the splash of water that came up and she has hit it fat. Just like I thought may happen. Well, that might have been a little bit of mind over matter or matter over mind, perhaps in that case there, because didn't seem to be sitting that badly. The ball did it and it wasn't 
the obvious pooling of water below her, so maybe she just talked herself into a bad shot there as much as anything. Yeah, I'd agree with that assessment, Warren. Olivia Cowan, fourth shot on 12. Really important for Cowan to keep her head on here. Very easy to become frustrated. Yeah, that's one way to keep the grips dry. Now let's take a look at her playing part as we saw Holly Clyburn find that left-hand side of the green. It's still going to be Cowan who's away here after just escaping from the hazard. Playing her fifth shot. And she's staring down the barrel of a, a triple bogey. She needs to do what Madsen did here after finding the water and knock it in there tight. Escape with just a double bogey if she can. It's really the name of the professional game is minimizing your mistakes. How do you handle adversity? Most of these players all talented enough and skilled enough to make a bunch of birdies and eagles. How do you handle things when the swing's not quite right, ball goes in the water or out of bounds. So the fifth shot here for Olivia Cowan. And still with a fair bit of club in hand. Water on the right-hand side, short of the green here. She has been leaking them. Stayed down pretty well through that contact. And that's a pretty good shot, but she needs to make that for a double bogey six. As she ponders what's happening there on 12, let's go to the clubhouse. And Annabelle Rowley standing by with Christina Kim. Christina Kim, we are delighted. Well, I, you know, I absolutely love being here in Oz. Um, you know, this year my love has been unrequited. I'm not going to lie. But, um, you know, I just came back from a week in Adelaide and now uh, my first visit here to Coffs Harbour and it's been absolutely breathtaking. My first day here I was like, are we playing golf in Jurassic World? This is so cool. I saw a koala yesterday, wallaby in the wild. Like, it's just, it's been an incredible week. It really has. Oh, that's fantastic. It is a beautiful area. Will you have a chance to see any other parts of Australia while you're here? Um, no, I actually have a flight out tomorrow leaving uh, for from Sydney back to the States. I, I did have my two weeks here um, and was able to spend a great week in Adelaide, hung out at the Fringe Fest. And then uh, earlier this week, I was over at the Coffs Harbour Jetty, ate some amazing local cuisines, had my first finger lime. It's uh, um, So unfortunately, I won't really be able to do much more. I'm hoping to check out the big banana before I leave, though. I think that's an absolute must. Well, and hopefully you'll be back next year. Getting to your round today, you had a par in the rain on the last toll for one over today. How'd your game feel out there today? It was actually a bogey for two over, but oh, that's okay. I'm that's so right. sorry. No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, no, it was, I think it was a bit of a challenge out there. You know, we had a, a lot of a lot of humidity, as you can tell from my glistening skin, um, <laughs> a bit of rain that came down in the last hole. And, and one of the great things about this golf course is that, you know, you've got, I think today we had more of a northwesterly wind, but with the way that the, the holes are designed and everything, the wind really swirls as it goes through these little channels running up and down the fairways. So it provides an incredible challenge. And the greens, uh, the greens definitely have gotten me so far this week. So hopefully tomorrow I'll go back and get them. Yeah, it's certainly demanding out there in, in all parts of the course. Have you seen any koalas? Yesterday I saw my first koala in the wild. I've held one, you know, going to the zoo and doing like, you know, like the, the experiences and things like that. But yesterday, just off of number 16, I finally saw my first koala. He was just sitting there having a little nap and then um, ended up three putting. So <laughs> maybe oh, I should avoid that. Gosh, maybe a little distracted by the, the beautiful native animal here. Um, good luck tomorrow. We're so happy to have you in the country and hope you come back next year. Thanks Maybe you can so explore much. more of the country then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I plan on definitely coming back and, and just, uh, you know, getting a little revenge starting tomorrow. <laughs> Do it then. Thank you very much, Christina Kim. Back to you guys. Thank you, Annabelle. Just a delight to have Christina Kim back in the country once again. Such a colourful character and, well, it's easy to be put off by those koalas, isn't it? If you not used to seeing them in, well, we're not used, not used to seeing them in the wild, are we? City, city slickers like us. Uh, it's pretty uh, pretty cool to come out and play golf at a very special venue, albeit slightly waterlogged at the moment. You could see, I think there was a bit of a discussion there between our final group, of 
Clyburn, Boutier and Cowan as to the, the water down that left-hand side. Holly Clyburn's putt not too far away from that little channel of water down the left edge of the green. There might have been a discussion as to whether it was affecting the line of her putt or not. Certainly going to make things difficult trying to judge the speed of these putts because not only now do you have the slopes, swales to contend with, but also pools of water. Is it wet in parts? Is it dry in others? Clyburn currently in a tie with Boutier at minus nine. For sole possession. Gives it a very firm wrap. And maybe thinking the greens might have been a little more affected perhaps than they actually are. She's rolled that some two and a half, maybe three metres past the cup. A difficult one to save par here at 12 for one of our co-leaders. Just getting back to the wildlife, Warren, and I've had many overseas friends and visitors that I've known come out here and play golf in Australia. And you know, they might visit Taronga Park Zoo in Sydney to to begin with and they love seeing the wildlife and the animals but once you see the kangaroos the koalas the wallabies on a golf course up close it really is a sight to behold there's nothing like it we're pretty lucky to be able to play the game and be able to see so many beautiful animals native to our country up so close this is cow and she's not worried about any of those animals right now this is for a double bogey on 12 and dare I say, has work left for a triple bogey. We'll go ahead one hole to Valdis Johns Dottier. This at 13. I mentioned these players, Warren, that, that it's going to be so difficult to lag the ball now after this rain because there are certain parts of the greens that are wet and there are certain parts where the, the moisture from the rain will have run off to the side. So... It might only be a 15-foot putt, but you're putting from like a wet portion of the mm. green to a pin placement that might be just over a slope and it's dry. It would be an absolute nightmare for these players trying to get the speed right coming in. To drop just the one stroke, which she limits the damage there, John's dot here. So we go back. To 12. There's been some adventures here, and it's taken a long time for this group to actually play the 12th, given the troubles of Olivia Cowan. The good news is the rain, by my estimation, is easing up. Oh, it was a good putt, but just catches the high side, and it will be a bogey five, unfortunately, should Clyburn tap this in. It's a cliche. Patience. The last six or seven holes is going to be absolutely critical because these players, look at what Olivia Cowan's doing now. You could really shoot yourself out of contention going into tomorrow if you let anything get to you coming in. Celine Boutier. Coming off a bogey at 11. And nicely hold here at the par 4 12th. And there are changes at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah. Olivia Cowan about to drop at least three shots back into a share of fourth place with Valdis Johns Dottier and also Hannah Green at five under. Boutier though on top here the Australian Ladies Classic at Bonville. Well, it's a difficult hole, the 12th, no doubt about it. The tee box up there perched amongst the enormous trees and come downhill and has it on the right-hand side and if you get it moving left to right with that breeze, Coming off the left-hand side as well. That's exactly what happened to Olivia Cowan. She rolls that in. That for a seven. 
to drop three shots there at the par four, and she slides all the way from eight under back to five under. 15 minutes ago was one stroke off the pace, now four. A little bit of movement at the top with Clyburn also dropping a stroke on 12. So Cowan back to five under. Clyburn at minus eight. We didn't see Celine Boutier on number 12, but looks like she's made a birdie. So a lot of, a lot of movement there. That's impressive today. Oh. The rain perhaps just just easing off. If that's the case, these well draining greens can handle the conditions here at Bonville just fine. Well that would never happen, that one on a dry day, a ball pulling up on that downslope. Gosh, that's going to be an awkward lie. And there's Dame Laura Davies, coming from the UK, 33 years of professional, would have experienced these conditions. This would ideally, Warren, be one where she lets it rip on 18. I don't know if she's going to be able to do that in these conditions. More worried about holding onto the club than anything. Looking back towards the 17th tee. Across the water here at the penultimate hole, the par three. Looking back through the weather. Marion Scarpnord on the tee here at the 17th. 131 metres. And at the moment, back into the breeze. Pretty much almost directly into the, the nor'easter, blowing these squalls in from just off the coast here on the north coast of New South Wales. First of two weeks back to back in this part of the world, the Australian Ladies Classic here at Bonville this week. And then next week, the New South Wales Women's Open returns. We played at Coffs Harbour, a tee shot of Scarpnord. Yeah, good shot from the 32-year-old Norwegian. Three ladies European Tour wins to her credit. Played in the 2007 World Cup, Skartnord, for Norway. Just after turning professional. Solid career, seven professional wins. Uh, she Yu Lin. You anglicise it, becomes Janet. Shen Shen Fung, known as Jenny. Number one player in the world at the moment. What's Warren in Chinese? It's going to be my homework. <laughs> These days you can just Google something and see what it comes out at. Shi Yu Lin, just off the back edge there. Downhill putt coming up there. At the par three, 17th. Shi Yu Lin, 21 years old. This is his seventh year as a professional Warren. Incredible to think. Turned pro at the age of 15. Already has one ALPG win and two ladies European tour wins. Johanna Gustafsson, the 25 year old Swede. Interesting fact about Gustafsson, won the Larvik Ladies Open on the Ladies European Tour in 2015. Have a guess how long the playoff went for. Pretty good tee shot there. If you played shots like that in the playoff, wouldn't have gone too many holes. I'm going to say, let's say, something, nine. Nine holes? Cold. 14 holes. A 14 record holes. playoff. Actually, our mate, Paul Gow, I remember him winning a web.com tour event in South Carolina many years ago against Ruji Imada. Eight hole playoff, I believe it was. Could have been 10, eight or 10. Incredible to think that a playoff could go 14 holes. They've had the same score for 13 holes. Yes, that is quite remarkable in a two person playoff. And well worth it in the end when you're hoisting the trophy. Oh, what a victory. Artis rehearsing her swing there, as I mentioned. 
before. Done a lot of hard work over the years with Gary Edwin at the Glades on the Gold Coast. Worked hard with Luke Edwin, Gary's son, on her putting. A tricky one here from the downslope. And you just you can see her when she just planted a left foot there earlier, the puddle that came up. So look for a bit of moisture to come up when she hits this. So important to catch the ball first, keep your levels. It's a good looking shot in the air, but just a little shy. Yeah, floating with the water short left here at 15. Husband Jeff on the bag there. And quite the team for some time, haven't they? Six years now, Warren. Travelled the world doing something they both love. Kudos to them. In this particular group, Noura Kumilainen and also Isabel Bonoir. Jenny Hagland. The 16th here at Bonville. Had a solid lead here last year on the ladies European tour. Three, three top 20s, one top 10. Mediterranean Ladies Open was top 50 in the LET order of merit. Still rolling out. Just so difficult to lag it up there to tap in distance. You'd love to be able to walk up there and nonchalantly tap her in. An easy thing to do today. Playing partner there. Just sizing up the putt in the jacket. That's Katie Burnett. She's had a fantastic round today, the American. She's currently four under par for the championship. Three under on the day. And before Warren, she finishes the round at this number or perhaps one stroke better. We're right there tomorrow, one would think. Well, very much like Augusta National itself. Anytime you have a lot of water in play on the way to the clubhouse, well, you can have massive swings as we saw only a couple of years ago with Jordan Spieth rinsing one at 12 and cruising to victory suddenly it changed things quite dramatically he had a five shot lead playing the back nine on sunday at augusta he was two behind after 12. seven shots in three holes so takes some doing doesn't it but it can happen very very quickly now back to our final group of the day cowan boutier and clyburn of course olivia cowan coming off triple bogey seven and that can really take some shaking off. I see some water really pooling up there on this section of the fairway. That was some casual water. Cowan's been given some relief. We saw Hannah Green have a few issues with her second shot hitting it fat. Down slope, wet fairway, up to the green. Cowan looks like she struck this one well. Oh, it's a fantastic shot. A little unlucky for that to check up on the second bounce with a wood. But it goes to show 360 metre par four and players are hitting woods in for their second Warren. It's, uh, the wet weather's taking its toll out there at the moment. She's been able to shake off the drama of 12. And Holly Clyburn catching the speed slot down the left-hand side of the hole, getting a bit of help from the cart path, and maybe won't have much more than an eight iron in here up the hill. Beautifully done. Had to hit a low hook underneath and around the trees. She'll be pretty content with getting that one on the putting surface. Uh, really trying conditions here suddenly at Bonville Golf Resort in this third round of the Australian Ladies Classic. Brand new event on the ALPG Tour and 
Also, the ladies' European tour, this co sanctioned tournament. Great to see so many of the European players down here for an Australian swing. And while they head up to 13, we'll go to the 14th. And the group that includes Hannah Green, who's at five under. Five behind our leader, though, Celine Boutier. See that green there at 14, holding up very well. Yeah, despite the fact that some of these fairways are wet and players are taking the odd drop for casual water, overall the course really holding up nicely. We have had some torrential rain at points over the past 24 hours. It's one of the most aesthetically pleasing golf courses you could ever wish to come to here at Bonville. Generous landing areas from the tee, but certainly a lot of trouble if you do miss those fairways. I actually almost think coming in these last few holes, Warren, it may not be a bad thing to be approaching from the rough because you're going to have a little, little extra grass underneath the ball, assuming you've got a decent lie. When you're playing from the fairway, like we saw with Hannah Green on the 13th hole on the previous hole, it's very easy to catch the ball fat. Whereas if you're coming from the rough, you may be able to strike the ball a little bit better. And with the softer greens, you don't really have to worry about the ball not holding because they're going to with the more moisture on them. So if it works out that way here for Valdis Johns Dottier. Interested spectator in the left-hand corner of your picture there, the Kookaburra. They're everywhere here. to be pretty good contact and the result is fantastic great shot from Sean's dot here back to minus four was minus six a couple of drop strokes seems to be the common theme apart from our leader Boutier seventeen Jenny Haglund Par three down the hill, 143 metres. And good shot, 20 feet to get into red figures. The Swede. To the flag there at 17, rather limply. It might be a little bit wet, but the breeze has died. Not so much of it around at the moment. The rain just continuing to ease off after a fairly significant rain squall hit the course some 20 minutes ago. 90% humidity out there at the moment too, Warren. So the, these players really understanding <laughs> the tropical climate in this part of the world. This losing it a long way right and it just had enough to sneak onto that front right corner of the green there, very wide green at 17. Be good tomorrow, I would think, Warren. Sunday pin placement there on the front right. I reckon that's where it might be. We'll wait and see. Speaking of waiting, playing partners waiting for Katie Burnett. She's taking a restroom break after the 16th. Oh, that or she spotted a Oh, the friendly koala wanted to go over and give him a bit of a cuddle. Well, you could be right. Christina Kim said to Annabelle before that she saw the koala just off the 16th green the other day, and that's where they just have finished. Sophie Gustafsson there on the bag for Katie Burnett. That, uh, that cap is uh, water by name and by nature at the moment. Back to Sophie Gustafsson. It's very important for these professionals to have wise people on their bag, people who could be a calming influence under pressure, and Gustafsson being a LET Hall of Famer. 
Solheim Cup stalwart. He's been there and done that. Right at the carpet, just about bounced in as well. See that pitch mark right in line with the flag. It did everything but jump into the hole for an ace. That putt will be to get to minus five and minus four on the round. Gustafsson loves that one. Take all the credit for that. Good yardage. That would get to minus five, which currently in a tie for third, Warren. Yeah, with holes to play, and as we mentioned, water, and plenty of them on the back nine here at Bonville. Five under, be a pretty handy position going into final round tomorrow with not too many players in front of her on the leaderboard. Boutier, 13. Oh, great save. That was a par putt. That's why she's at the top of the leaderboard. Cowan. Coming off the triple bogey on 12. This for a par on 13. Yeah, a lovely second shot, but having a lot of difficulty judging the speed with the putts right now. Five feet uphill. Right lip. Commit to the stroke, Olivia. Well done. Well done. Couldn't afford to drop another one. Even with that triple bogey, Warren. Still not out of it. I mean, there's 23 holes of golf left and there can be trouble lurking at any point. So you've just got to hang tough. And you never know when the birdies are going to come or your opponent could run into a bit of strife. Well, Clyburn for par. No, I guess it's the old saying if... We told you before the tournament began that at some stage you'd have a triple bogey, but you would still win the event. Would, would you be worried about the triple bogey? I guess the answer would be no. So you have to treat it that way. Just put it out of your mind and say, I'm still very much in the hunt here. Clyburn to stay within two of Celine Boutier. who's alone on top of the leaderboard with five holes to play for our final group of the day here at Bonville. The Australian star, Hannah Green, up ahead on 14. 466 metre par five. This for a birdie. Just strokes the ball absolutely beautifully, Hannah Green. Cross-handed grip, been putting that way for many years now and using it very efficiently in recent times. No question Hannah Green's going to break through on the LPGA Tour in the United States, just a matter of when. Nana Madsen tapping in there. Well, Nana, don't think you're going to need those sunglasses on your head for a little while. With the amount of rain out there. As they head off to the carts once again, let's take a look at this leaderboard. In the closing stages of this third round of the Australian Ladies Classic. It's Celine Boutier on top. She leads by just the one shot to Holly Clyburn. Olivia Cowan there and outright third at five under. Hannah Green, even par today and four under for the tournament, along with Katie Burnett and Valdis Jons Dottier, Daniela Holmquist, Florentina Parker and Rebecca Artis all on the front page of our leaderboard in this 2018 Australian Ladies Classic. Been hard to make ground today. Celine Boudier doing exactly that though. Three under on this third round to have a one stroke lead. 
Andrea Wong there at one under. And a Manson also at one under. Let's go back out on course. And the tall frame of Jenny Hagland. This for a birdie putt at 17. Up the hill. Pretty straight putt from where she was. Just a little left to right as it dies in speed at the hole. And she had the line worked out nicely. Just needed a fraction more weight. It'll be a solid three there at 17 for Hagland. Katie Burnett, the American in this group of Hagland, Burnett and Wickstrom. To move to a share of third, it drops in the right edge. Burnett gets it to five under. Jumps out of that host of players at four under the card. With, at the moment, just 12 players under par in pretty difficult conditions here today. By far the worst the players have faced since the event began back on Thursday in round one. Wickstrom's putt there, just sliding past the left edge. And three putt there from front right corner of that green at 17. Uh, brightening skies here in the Bonneville Golf Resort. The first, or rather the third round of this Australian Ladies Classic. Weekend action coming to you live from the north coast of New South Wales. The first of two weeks in this part of the world for the ALPG Tour and Ladies European Tour. This co-sanctioned event. And the tall gums of Bonville standing sentry around these difficult closing holes stretch between 12 and 14. If you can get through there in even par, you'll have done pretty well. Speaking of doing well, Laura Davies has made a couple of super putts on this second nine today. Eagled 18 yesterday. Shaking your head there, crowd pleaser. Great way to finish. Good to see a nice firm handshake from Laura as well. No air kissing. Is there too much air kissing in golf, Ewan? I think so. Just a simple shake of the hand. Enjoyed your company. Thanks for the day. Let's go to Rebecca Artis. Significantly above her feet here at the 16th. And a long way right. Ball well above her feet. The whole location of the back white right warren. It's not conducive for the stance she had, but doing a tremendous job. Rebecca Artis just getting back to the air air kissing. It's another thing that the celebrations as well, spraying water over someone when you finish. It's got to get back to the champagne, I think, Warren. Well, you know, so many young winners in recent times that most of them aren't of drinking age, and especially in the women's game. They come out and they are ready to win at a young age. So. Certainly was the case with Lydia Ko for many of her victories. At least 10 of them. Won the New South Wales Women's Open at 13. Ooh. A long way up this hill, the second shot here at 16 at Bonville. He's been all the way in the back. The conditions as soft as they have been so far this week. Certainly an exacting second shot here at the par four. Stretches out to just on 370 metres. Third last hole. Now, 
French woman from Marseille. Second shot on 16. Certainly a good angle coming from the left rough. Just couldn't get it up there onto the same level as the flag today. 25 metres on from the front edge. And that's one of the difficulties adjusting to the wet conditions. When that's dry, that ball would have released right up to the pin. With the rain we've had the past hour, not having the same effect. At 18, shot coming over the water at the par five. I believe that was Johanna Gustafsson. And a good shot that was on 18, pin high. Green on 15. We've already seen a handful of drops having to have been taken from casual water in the past half an hour. And you can see just in front of her ball to the right there. The water that has gathered on the fairway. And she caught one a little fat on 13. Yeah, she kept her levels much better there. Striking the ball first, divot after the ball. Well, we can only go by her reaction there at 15. Looking perplexed, I think would be the best way to describe that. Well, she expects a lot out of herself. Going back there and just taking a look at the direction of that divot. Or miscues today, but it's easy to do so in these conditions. Footing just slightly unfirm at times. And well, you've almost got to make a technique change in these conditions as well, because you've got to start almost playing three-quarter shots, get the ball back in the stance a little bit, strike the ball first. Make sure you don't hit the ball heavy. Not an easy thing to do. You've got to be acutely aware of your surroundings, your lie. Olivia Cowan. And triple bogey back on 12. Shook that off immediately by bouncing back with a solid par at 13. These are the ones with the wedges that are easy to catch fat. Not much bounce with the leading edge. Olivia Cowan, what a great shot there. 14, so looking very likely that she'll get one of those three drop strokes back. She's shown some mental toughness in the last couple of holes to shake off that triple bogey. Very good chance of rolling that next one in for a four here at the par five, with still the par five 18th to come. So a couple of scoring chances on the way in, but mixed all around them. Typical par three 17th over the water. And some of the toughest par fours on the course here at Bonville on the back nine. Holly Clyburn is over there among some of that old growth to the right-hand side. And there's a lot of that around the Bonville layout. Do well to find your ball there on occasions. Well, she ponders what she has there. Let's go back to the clubhouse. And after making a couple of long bombs on the way into the house... Laura Davies is with Annabelle Rowley. I'm with Dame Laura Davies. Fantastic to have you here. Seven birdies today, but this weather must remind you of being home in England. Well, it's not quite as warm as this when it rains, but yeah, seven birdies is great, but I had seven bogeys. It's disappointing, but that, that's this golf course. If you, if you get out of position, you're going to drop a shot. Yeah, it's extremely demanding from tee to green. Now, you had some strong performances at the end of last year and some consistent results. This year, your game must be feeling pretty good. Your confidence must be high. Absolutely, yeah. I've made uh, I've made the last eight cut, uh, seven or eight cuts that I've tournaments I've played and haven't missed one in, in a long while, which is obviously there's a consistency bit. Now we need to get a little bit better, not so many bogeys. Today was a classic round for me. I've I've been making lots of birdies, but lots of bogeys. So if I can cut those out, maybe I can get back in contention. But I'm just always 
just a little bit off the pace? Well, at the moment, uh, top 15, and hopefully it remains that way. Um, strategies for tomorrow going into the final round? Well, we decided we were going for it today. And like I said, we, we, we went with driver off the first, which is a very dangerous play and ended up bogey in the hole. So maybe a, a little bit of uh, accuracy early on in the round because there's some tight holes and then go for it because the all apart from 14 are reachable. The par fives are reachable in two pretty much. So you can get a good round going, if you, if you especially if the weather cooperates tomorrow. But from what I see, it's not going to. Yeah. Yes, no, um, there is some ominous weather on the way. We hope you uh, you do play well. We're always very grateful to have you here. You must like it in Australia because you keep coming back. Um, have you had a chance to see some of the surrounding areas? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been coming. I think this is my 29th year straight coming down here playing in all these Australian uh, tour events. Um, yeah, we, we get out to see lots of different things. I've never been to Coffs before and I really like it. It's one of my favourite spots because it's, uh, it's not too hot so far. I guess it can get hot here, but... Um, yeah, beautiful place. Well, we're very happy to have you here. Good luck for tomorrow. We hope you soar up that leaderboard. Annabelle Rowley with Laura Davies there. And a mixed round for Laura, but boy, she supplied some highlights with a couple of long putts down the bottom of the cup, especially that one she made at the par 5 18th just a few moments ago. At the top of the leaderboard, Celine Boutier. One stroke leader over Holly Clyburn. And then it's three shots back to Katie Burnett, Hannah Green, Valdis Johns Dottier, and also Olivia Cowan. We will take a break and come back to Bonville in just a moment. figures at the moment. It's dwindled down from 20 at the beginning of the day. Some good scores. Caroline Hedwald, the Swede, 69 today. Kristen Stott here with the round of the day. The Icelandic lady shooting 67 earlier on. She's currently at plus one for the tournament. Despite the conditions, still a few red numbers out there, especially on the first page. There's Kristen Stott here there. Last one. Okay, you see Danielson there. There's it one over along with Manon Molle. Nira Komulainen, also the Finnish player at one over. Carly Henry from Scotland, the first of the grouping at plus two. Plus six was good enough to get you a game on the weekend here. It'll be fascinating to see what the winning scoreline is at the moment. Given the conditions, and it's been hard to make any real advance today, eight under was Holly Clyburn's score at the halfway mark of this Australian Ladies Classic. I dare say anything in double figures under par. You'll go very close to winning here over the closing round and a bit that we have left here in Bonville. No question there, Warren. And good to see quite a few of the amateurs making the weekend's play here at the inaugural Ladies Classic. Nina Pagova from Russia there. I know we've got a lot of friends watching out there in Russia. Looking down the hill over the water to the iconic par 3 17th here at Bonville Golf Resort. This is the third round of the Australian Ladies Classic. We've had some chopping and changing at the top of the leaderboard. There's been some drama for some of our leaders. One of them, Holly Clyburn, has some issues here, it would seem, at 14, the par five. She was in trouble to the right off the tee. And now it's a game of pick up sticks with her ball Wedge just behind a tree here. So more problems here. We saw Olivia Cowan a moment ago make a triple bogey seven at the par 4 12th. 
She was one shot off the lead at the time. And with Clyburn in trouble here, he might have Celine Boutier in a moment with a two, if not three shot lead with some four holes to play in round three. Keep it in play around Bonville. And you saw with Laura Davies make seven birdies today. That's something that can definitely happen here at Bonville. Here's Boutier, who had six birdies and an eagle yesterday. This is for a birdie on 14. This to get to 10 under par. And she's been rolling in those beautifully all day. Now she's two strokes ahead of Clyburn, but with Clyburn's issues on 14, one would think that that lead may expand here shortly. Well, the French woman could suddenly find herself with a four, if not five stroke lead, depending on what happens here with Clyburn. Well, if she's gonna go right of the tree there, she's gotta be careful she doesn't snap the club on the follow through. And it look, she's looking that way right now. If you are concerned about snapping the club as the caddy continue to try and clean out some of the, the scrub the unattached scrub from behind the ball, of course. You can't move anything that's living and still attached to the, the earth. It's got to be dead and just laying there to be able to be moved. Needs a club to get it back in play, but also might need to take a club that you may not need on the way home if you somehow bend the shaft. Just taking a look at that one there. And skirting through the left-hand side of the green. So Clyburn with her issues. I think the shaft looks okay. Yeah, she did a pretty good job there. Luckily, she only had to hit the ball some 40 or 50 metres. Now up ahead at 17, Rebecca Artis with her tee shot. Oh, beautiful shot. We saw Katie Burnett hit a cracker in there 15 minutes ago, but Artis doing even better to about three and a half, four feet that to get to minus three. Back to the travails of Holly Clyburn. That ball sitting down just in time, otherwise she would have had a very tricky pitch here for her fourth shot, we do believe. Yeah, well, I mean, she'd obviously be looking to make a birdie on this par five, Warren, but Considering where that second shot wound up, could have, very, could have very easily not found that ball and had to go back to where she played her second from. So if she can get this close and get out with a par, but I think she's going to be in a pretty positive mindset heading to the 15th tee. But this is not an easy shot. Uphill lie, playing to a down slope. And 20 feet past, 15, 20 feet. Now, this is that, all of a sudden, at Boutier at 10, Clyburn would be at 7, with Cowan up to 6 again. I dare yes. say a little bit of bark on that ball perhaps as well, given the trouble she had on both the tee shot and the second shot. A bit of barking at the ball if she misses this putt as well, I would think. Well, playing partners have had to cool their heels while they waited for her, and now perhaps she thinks the ball might be damaged, so she's going to get one of her playing partners as her marker to come across and just check the condition of that ball to see if it's uh, damaged enough to be replaced. Could only think that it's hit the cart path with the second shot for it to be damaged because there's no way a ball can be damaged from any of the shots she's hit or simply just hitting a tree. Might be just taking a little personal time out as well at the moment, just trying to get a head back in the game. I purchased a box of old fashioned balatas a couple of days ago when I was in Brisbane. You could do some damage with them off the cart path or the tee, let me tell you. Oof. And the odd knife bunker shot as well. They Katie would, Burnett. They would be in half those things. Good shot into 18 for Burnett. Where did you get those balatas, Warren? I didn't know you could purchase balatas anymore. Oh, secret stash. People have them locked away in garages and sheds all over the place. You've just got to know the right place to look. Well connected. Par putt, Holly Clyburn, 14. This to remain two strokes behind Boutier. 
should move slightly to her left. To bogey on a hole, she would have been looking to gain a stroke. She's dropped one. And the overnight leader is now three strokes behind the French woman. Still in second place. And they've all had their issues. Cowan, not that long ago. Clyburn here at 14. And Boutier, apart from one little hiccup, she made bogey at the par 3 11th. Her only mishap of the day after being out in 31. Four under. Front side 35, the back nine with the three par fives, a par 37 on the way in here at Bonville. And suddenly, Boutier, who was tied for the lead only a couple of holes ago, now has a three-shot advantage. Here is Olivia Cowan on the tee at 15 and ready to fire. Just had her score there at minus five, but I've got to believe she's at minus six after just seeing her make that birdie at 14. Let's see, it's a visually intimidating tee shot here at 15. You've got the hazard on the right, Woods on the left, Cowan going with the three wood, lovely free flowing motion. Oh, good tee shot, perfect position. A few puddles out there, but considering, considering the amount of rain we've had, it's currently holding up very well. The run out to the end of the first section of fairway here, only 215 metres. And in these damp, heavy conditions, heavy air today here at Bonneville, given the, the rain we've had, a nice smooth swing from our leader by three. Yeah, that's the thing, Warren. A lot of people assume that with the warmer weather, the ball just naturally goes a lot further. But when you're playing in the heavy air and this humidity, it almost got the opposite effect. You know, add half a club. Big fan of Boutier, the, her pace of play just stands up there and nonchalantly gives it a hit. Same with the putting. Look at some of the best putters of all time. Aaron Baddeley, Brad Faxon, just stand up there and hit it. No overthinking. Holly Clyburn taking the long iron from the tee. Got that heavy and started it at the bunker, just drawing towards the sand. But you see it there, sitting there, that was... Pretty poor contact, wasn't it? She's rattled by what just happened at 14. And that's going to leave her a really long second shot. I'm a little baffled by that play. We've seen her take that long iron out a few times, but with the wet weather now, I'm surprised she didn't take more club off that tee. We'll go ahead a couple of holes to 17. Artis doesn't waste the chance off the back of that fantastic tee shot. Rolls in the birdie putt and moves to three under. Seven back from our leader, Celine Boutier. Great round today from Katie Burnett. Oh, that was to shoot equal low round of the day, which would have also been an equal course record, 67, but not to be, and still quite a bit of work left. And she ponders what she has left there at 17. We'll take a look at our leaderboard as things stand with movement at the top. Boutier three clear from Holly Clyburn. But Clyburn, after a poor tee shot there at 15, might have a battle in the hands to make par at the 330 metre par four. Olivia Cowan bounced back well after that triple bogey seven at 12. Kate Burnett is right there as well in the top five along with Hannah Green and Valdis Thora Johns Dottier at the Australian Ladies Classic.
international flavour on the leaderboard. A couple of Australians. England, Germany, France, Sweden, Iceland, all being represented. Down the 18th green from the clubhouse here at Bonville Golf Resort. This is round three of the Australian Ladies Classic. In gloomy conditions and Holly Clyburn not handling things all that well at the moment. Another hand off the club here at the par four. She is really struggling to keep things together. In fact, they're going from bad to worse. Well, Celine Boutier's eyes are just lightening up right now. Currently three ahead of Clyburn. Clyburn in trouble. Just think that was the wrong play off the tee from Holly Clyburn laying it that far back. I know she did catch it a little heavy, but Boutier, you can see she's 70, 80 yards further up the fairway after taking the three wood. And solid shot finding the putting surface. And got to think two putts is going to see her at least four strokes ahead at the end of the 15th hole. Great round today, Warren. Four under par in these conditions. Got to be commended. Yeah, she has been just a par-making machine, hasn't she? While Clyburn made three birdies but tossed in four bogeys and she's going to make well, at least another one here unless she finds a way somehow to hold this fourth shot that she's about to play. I think if she gets it within about 10, 15 feet from where she is, big side slope, thick rough, She'll be doing really well. She has the option, of course, to take it back onto the flat section up there on the fairway, keeping that point where it last crossed the margin of the hazard between her and the flag. So she can drop it there, but if it was me, you and I'd be going back some 15, 20 metres, picking out a number that I'm comfortable with, with the wedge, and then she heard you from up there on the flat. And thankfully, common sense has prevailed. And not that you would on this occasion, but the one rule, one of the five options you've got with the red lateral hazard is what, they, what you call equidistant margin. So you can take that point of entry and go on the other side of the water. In this case, not that you would. It would be deep in the bushes on the left. You may not ever be found again if you venture in there. But it's, on some occasions, it can be advantageous to do that. So thankfully she's listened to your advice warren and she's gone back on the fairway and she's certainly going to have a much better opportunity of getting it close you would think from here so her caddy finding a number finding a spot on the fairway where the fairways are marked ahead of the tournament if you haven't seen a lot of tournament golf in the past and all the players and their caddies carry yardage books or meterage books depending on what numbers you're working in. i dare say holly clyburn playing in yards this week She'll have a sand wedge in hand. And this her fourth shot. So after coming off a bogey at the par 5 14th, being in trouble on the right hand side in the, the tall timber. Issues here with the water at 15.
would have looked good to her, but 20 feet left for a bogey. It's looking likely that Molly Clyburn's going to drop a couple of shots. And we'll get back to Olivia Cowan in your picture there. Go up ahead to Jean's dot here for a birdie on 16. This to get to minus five in a share of fourth, which very soon could be a share of third with Holly Clyburn in trouble. Uphill, right to left. Oh, just lost pace and just another one, Warren. Just won't settle near the hole. Uh, quite a bit of slope on that back section of the green there at 16, the top tier. So a couple of parts that break very hard as they die towards the hole. This part should be more just down the slope, the fall line of the green, maybe a fraction left to right uh, as Manson looks at it. It's very rare that you see a player win three times in a season on tour. Both her and Hannah Green last year on the Symmetra Tour accomplishing that feat. Hasn't been what she was hoping for today. Plus four on the round. Yet to make a birdie. Oh, well done, Nana Madsen. Also in this group is Hannah Green, Perth in Western Australia. At the moment, the leading Australian in the field, trying to keep pace. Celine Boutier out in front, currently 10 under, and a three-shot leader, which might be more in a moment. Holly Clyburn definitely dropping at least one shot back at 15. Very rarely misses. Don't want to put the mocker on her, but such a beautiful punting stroke. And as soon as I say that, worst part of the day, commentator's curse. It works every time, doesn't it? You can lock it in. The moment you give somebody a rap, they'll prove you wrong straight away. Missing on the low side, that putt really does feed away, so bit left there for Hannah Green. Actually goes to show just how good Nana Madsen's putt was to hold that one down the hill left to right. Precarious hole location. Good putt there from John's dot here and Hannah Green's boyfriend, Jared Felton. Currently mentioned before, currently playing the New Zealand PGA Championship where he's defending champion. He's eight under par after three rounds in a tie for 19th. Similar part here for Hannah Green. Firm in the back of the cup, nicely done. Unable to make headway here today with the breeze freshening again, the rain easing off, and the wind is back at Bonneville. Let's go to 15, our leader, Celine Boutier. Long range birdie effort, and the pace again. It's been difficult for the players to judge these greens with all the water that's fallen in the last half an hour to an hour here, the north coast of New South Wales, but she has done a tremendous job at just knowing the pace and weight of each of these putts, no matter the distance, and her holding out from three metres or so has been exemplary. And getting rid of at least part of the rain gear. Holly Clyburn has this for a bogey, unfortunately. Left herself a long way back off the tee. Didn't quite catch the tee shot. Similar Contact with the second shot, which squirted into the water. So 
Some 30 feet here, this for bogey. And a little real estate left for a double bogey, Warren. So, bogey at 14. Wheels coming off a little bit for first round leader, second round leader. Got to be careful she doesn't shoot herself right out of this tournament. And while Booty here won't know exactly what's going on in the groups ahead of her, but realising that her playing partners are stubbing their toes all over the place in the shape of Cowan and Clyburn, she'll be just trying to stay composed on the inside, thinking, boy, I have a handy margin here between myself and the chasers in the closing stages of this third round. Cowan made triple bogey at 12. Par 13, beautiful birdie at 14. This for a par at 15. She steadied the ship. Doesn't want to drop one again here. This to remain minus six, and she'll be in second position if she's to hold this. Well done. 21-year-old German. Cowan in for a four here at 15. Boutier has this for her par. Checks the alignment of the ball with the shaft of the putter. Little trend that's catching on at various tours around the world. Yeah, sort of a modern day version of the old plum bob. And again, rock solid. Love the way she putts. Doesn't take any time and just wraps it in the back of the hole. Four-shot lead. And with Clyburn here, it's been a tale of woe on this back nine for our overnight leader. Bogey at 12, bogey at 14. It will be a double bogey six here at 15. And she slides all the way back to five under par. To update conditions, let's go once again to Annabelle. So about half an hour ago, we had some very heavy showers and there is a lot of casual water around the course. Um, but it seems to be clearing up now and the, the sun's even peeping out so I'm hopeful that um, things are on the up and up with the weather Let's hope that's the case Annabelle three holes to play for our final group and if they get a little clean burst here with that rain squall uh, heading down the coast it seemed blown by the nor'easter on the north coast of New South Wales they might be able to make it to the clubhouse Hannah Green only a couple of holes to play Tee shot here at the 35 metre today, par 317. Trying to hang on to that front apron and we'll just manage to do that. Another shot in close though. Seen a couple go very close to making an ace here in the last hour or so. Well, it's not a difficult shot on 17, but it's more visually that intimidates you than anything. Ball in there, close. Nana Madsen coming off her first birdie of the day at 16. Could go back to back, and then on 18, another great opportunity for a birdie to par five. So, Jean Stott here. Seven iron. Oh, and all over the flag as well, one. Uh, it's a terrific shot. She'll have a putt coming back down the slope there for. A birdie. Now the final par three and then the closing 18th, the par five up and over the hill. A chance to maybe pick up a couple of shots between here and the clubhouse. Or Jon's dot here. Putting Iceland golf on the map here at Bonneville this week. Some fantastic golf courses in Iceland, Warren, and it's also home to the Midnight Golf Challenge. They have an amateur tournament every year. Anyone can play from all over the world, three-day tournament where you tee off at midnight. Wow. 
Had a mess with your body clock. I don't know where you were. Birdie putt at 18 for the Frenchwoman boy now. Yeah, just a little shy. Teeing off at midnight. What would you get dinner at 6 a.m. and a couple of adult beverages after that? It's a bizarre one, really. Yeah. Be good fun for a week. They get a bit kooky up there, don't they? I remember when they, uh, they beat England in the Euro 2016. And the celebrations that took place there. It was quite a sight. Qualified for the World Cup again this year. Iceland. They don't need much of an excuse for a celebration up there, do they? Given the dark, long, cold winters. Second fittest nation statistically in the world. Might be all that fermented shark meat. Might be. Coming off a birdie on 17, Rebecca Artis. This would be a great way to finish. Back-to-back -back birdies just to tie Hannah Green at four under and move into a share of fourth. Quick putt. Just powered it through the break. Three and a half, four feet left for a par. We'll be putting back up the slope from this position. Leads this to stay seven behind Boutier. Then goes through a little aim point ritual. Very much a definite part of her pre shot routine. Well, sneaks in the side door. Three under par. Certainly very uh, individual. Pretty short routine, that one. It's like watching a join the dots puzzle come to life, wasn't it? It was very much one to two to three to four. You see the gears grinding as she went through all the very particular movements before she got over the putt. But the important part is she made the putt and she has a chance tomorrow, depending on what happens, of course. A leading group at the moment. Celine Boutier doing a beautiful job out in front. Well, let's go to 17. We saw the tee shot of Hannah Green just missing the green here to the left. Wasn't one of her better iron shots, but outside chance for a birdie to get it to five under par and there it is just missed great effort the rain jacket has come off three bogeys two birdies on the second nine today for hannah green really has mixed things up even par through the round but it's been Five birdies and five bogeys in total. Holly Clyburn. And we let them slide as far as the shots are concerned on the way home here. See this sloping 16th fairway. The second shot, the ball above the player's feet. It's still moving despite the, <laughs> the wet weather we've had over the last hour or so. That one trying to creep down to the first cut of rough and will... That's incredible. Just that about <laughs> get there as well. That had a big fade on it as well. That's incredible. Back over to 17. Artis Johns dot here. It was a good putt for much of its travel there. Just sliding past the low side, but a very solid three with the par five 18th to come. 
Stays at four under. Which at the moment is only two back from second place. 350,000 Australian dollars up for grabs, the total purse this week, Warren. So, very lucrative tournament for these ladies. Finish as high up as you can. Put yourself in a good position on the order of merit. And Celine Boutier, the top of the leaderboard, trying to set things up for tomorrow's final round, the closing stages of this third round at the Australian Ladies Classic. It's such a peaceful afternoon here on the north coast of New South Wales. We're at Bonville Golf Resort. This is the third round of the Australian Ladies Classic. Holly Clyburn, our 36-hole leader with big issues on the second nine here today at Bonville. Playing her third shot here in a moment. Just missing the green. At 16 on the low side pin today on the top level back section of the green dropped four shots in the last four holes so really needs to steady the ship coming in not a bad chip there but still a little bit of work to do so a par Playing partner and leader Celine Boutier at the moment in the background there, just pacing off another putt, which she's eyeing off, which she's putted so well here today. Olivia Cowan has played very well, apart from the one stumble, and the major one it was as well. Triple bogey seven at the par 4 12th. Having said that, she did manage to make a double bogey seven at the par 5 4th as well. Outside of that, she's rolled in five birdies. She's given them all back, though, in just two holes. This one a little bit aggressive. Slippery putt coming down the hill, and we know that bends a little bit from left to right as well. So we've got a 
work cut out there just to save the par. So Boutier is really just putting one foot in front of the other, not doing anything wrong at the moment. The old cliche of just keeping it in play, fairways and greens. Love the way she puts, puts the ball down, goes behind it for about two or three seconds. One practice stroke. A couple of quick looks. Boom. No time for overthinking or overanalyzing. And that was a really good putt. But again, just look how much the ball rolls out. It turns sideways at the hole, doesn't it? And down the slope there, that's rolled some two and a half, maybe three metres away. So uphill putt, you know, that one at least is pretty straight. to get this rolling. Similar putt to the one Nana Madsen hole. A couple of inches outside left. Extremely quick. Don't want to power this one through the break. So she came out of that putt straight away. Roll on and on. Well, Warren Boutier holds this putt. That lead would be five shots. That's a nice position. It stays that way going into the last round. Given the nature of this course, with all the water that there is, only one hole is required and things can change very quickly. It certainly can, but you know, when you're four or five ahead going into the final round, knowing that the lowest round this week in the course record is only five under par, feeling pretty good about your chances knowing that going going out there you just don't have to do anything spectacular at all as long as you don't shoot yourself in the foot the title would be yours anyway she's not on Sunday yet this is the 16th on Saturday this is for par pretty straight maybe a hair right to left well done keeps making putt after putt. Such a confident, smooth stroke. Not much can go wrong with that. Yes, nothing looks to be bothering her at all at the moment. Ten under par and five ahead of Clyburn who has this to remain that way and Cowan has three feet left to fall to minus five. Up and down at 16. That will just stem the flow for the moment. Now, overnight leader tumbling down the leaderboard. Last four holes. Before this one, she'd gone bogey par, bogey, double bogey. Now Cal. Just left of centre putt. Quite the firm stroke she was hoping for, but it trickled in the front edge, and that's all she had to do. But it is suddenly five shot advantage for our leader, Celine Boutier, freewheeling here at Bonville out in front. Captured her first ladies' European tour event just three months ago in Sanya for second title. And Warren. Anna Green playing her second shot some 15, 20 metres away from where we're currently sitting. And what a beautiful view that is down to the 18th green. And it's not an easy shot. Ball below your feet. Slight downhill lie. Front left hole location. 
And that ball looks to be going a little right of the flag, but that's exactly where you want to be looking with this approach. And it's a little short and rolling all the way back down the hill. And I can tell you that because we're turning over our shoulder and able to see that ball, but it's a fairly straightforward pitch from that position. Plenty of green to work with coming up for and a green. John's Dottie are trying to get this to go right to left off the down slope. Pretty clever if she can manage to do that, and she does. That's a super second shot. Coming in with a wood, it's impossible to get that ball anywhere near that whole location. So 20, 25 feet right of it is a fantastic effort from John's Dot here. Big tee shot from Nana Madsen Warren. Really crunched it over the hill, helped by the nor'easter. And just in between clubs, it would appear at the moment. This has been a great comeback from Madsen. Didn't have a birdie until the 16th hole today. Birdied 16, birdied 17. Now with this second shot into 18, she's putting herself, maybe not necessarily right back in the tournament, but a birdie here and she'll only be two strokes behind second place. That is 100% right. That is the, the primary task at the moment. If you take Boudia out of the equation, if you're some eight strokes behind, but second place and a very handy check by the end of the weekend is well within sight. All below her feet again. Normally a fade set up. See if like John's Dottie, she can get this to turn over and sneak it behind that bunker close to the flag. She's going to have a little more chance of being able to do that with an iron as opposed to a wood. Still, the ideal line is 15, 20 feet right of the hole. Will she be greedy and take it on? See, she's aiming it at that back right bunker. She's being fooled by the wind here. Just not too strong right now, but it is swirling a little bit amongst the gum trees to the sides of the fairway in consultation with the caddy. Annabelle Rowley was talking to Christina Kim earlier in the day. Christina noted that with the tall gum trees here, pockets of the course, it can be really difficult to judge the breeze as accurately as you would like to. It should be helping off the left-hand side, though, for this final approach for the day for Madsen. a little bit uh, right where she would have been looking be a very difficult two putt from there but still don't be too disappointed Nana birdies at 16 and 17 and an eagle putt at 18 things could have been much worse and some distance behind after they've had trouble in this final group on back-to-back -back holes with Clyburn and Cowan almost two holes behind here is our leader, Boutier, at the par 3, 17th. And again, her numbers as far as distance control are very good. She is just doing everything she needs to at the moment. Five shots ahead. Has not looked like putting a foot wrong. Clyburn, and she love a birdie birdie finish. We've seen a few balls close here at 17. This one looks to be heading slightly left. Here long. And Olivia Cowan, last to play. Need to turn this one in from right to left. Uh, not too bad a shot. 18 feet. Get back that stroke she dropped on the previous hole. Well, the ball's there at 17 of our final group of the day. It's a five-stroke lead, if you don't mind, for Celine Boutier, Katie Burnett, Daniela Holmquist, Olivia Cowan and Holly Clyburn, our overnight leader, all there in a share for second at Bonville.
at the end of a long day for the players here at Bonville Golf Resort, the sun peeking through the massive gums at this magnificent layout on the north coast of New South Wales. This is the inaugural Australian Ladies Classic co-sanctioned event on the ALPG Tour and the Ladies European Tour. And we have just the one group, our final group to play at 17, at 18, our second last group of the day, Valis Johns Dotty, a tremendous second shot she played into the par five. And she should have a very makeable pup there for Birdie to finish off a day that promised so much early on. While everybody else has been going backwards, falling out of the lead, the likes of Olivia Cowan and Holly Clyburn, Dotty has been able to hang on. Now Nana Madsen. Not quite the marble staircase she's coming down here, but a tricky putt that builds up speed. That's a great roll from the top level. That's a brilliant putt, Warren, and that to finish with three straight birdies after a fairly ordinary day at plus four on the round. And that to shoot a one over par 73, get it to three under par, and just be two strokes behind second place. to show the importance of grinding it out till the end. Not only does every dollar count in professional golf, but you just never know what the leaders are going to do tomorrow. There's still 18 holes to play on Sunday. Boutier doesn't look like it at the moment, but if she were to come back to the field, it would bring a lot of people back into contention, including this lady, Hannah Green. Pitched aggressively from down below. This for a birdie. This would get her into a share of, equal, of second at five under par. No, not quite hard enough, but Hannah Green. That's an even par round of 72. Just didn't quite get it going today, but certainly didn't do anything wrong. Minus four. That's currently in a share of fourth place. In the case of five birdies, five bogeys, and eight pars for Hannah Green, including a five there at the last as we go back to 17. And Holly Clyburn from just off the back edge. This for birdie. Left to right. A fair bit of break in its last two or three metres. There was one right up there. Yeah. And this one here, the dark one in... At the hole, oh, just running past the top side. Just a, just a little too much speed there. Holly Clyburn, just a difficult back nine. Had a couple of bogeys in the middle stretch of the second round, but apart from that, pretty much flawless golf. Very difficult to go four rounds at Bonville without really having too many abominations on the scorecard. Cowan unfortunately succumbed to the 12th hole, making a triple bogey, losing a ball. But she's held it together pretty steadily since, even par since then. She's currently at five under par, which is plus one on the round. This to get it back to level on the round, despite that triple bogey and an outright second. It's like a branding iron that putter she has, doesn't it? They come in all sorts of weird and wonderful shapes these days. It's part of the game that really has undergone an evolution over the last 10 years, maybe 15 years in particular. The last this area of the game where technology was really to uh, rear its head. Oh, good putt there from Cowan. There's just, it's really personal preference, isn't it? It really does not matter what putter you use, what style you use. You've got to be comfortable with it. You've got to be confident with it. Remember to the gay in the US used to use a bullseye putter and he wanted every putt to be a right to left putt. So he putted left to right as left handed. 
It was uh, a unique skill to be able to do that, but just highlights that there's no right nor wrong. Now, Boutier. This to get to minus 11 and a whopping six strokes in front. Oh, gosh. For all money, like it was going to four. Oh, that's another solid par, 10 under, five ahead. Birdie at the last, and Boutier has the equal course record. There's just no putt at the moment. She doesn't fancy. That looked good the whole way. Watch her putting stroke on 18 if we get the chance. It's very reminiscent of Jordan Spieth. Long backswing, doesn't follow through too much, but it's not decelerating and keeps the putter low to the ground. I love it. Now, Clyburn, this for par. Nicely done. She stays five back from our leader and her playing partner, Celine Boutier. What a change in our overnight situation. Holly Clyburn had a two-stroke lead at eight under. Boutier was at six under. She's four better here today. And she leads by five. We have just one hole here to play, even less with our last group of the day. Sizing things up here for their second. Holly Clyburn a long way back the top of the hill at the closing par 5, 8. Thing. She does give it a wallop though, and she's had a real go at this green. She'll miss it just short to the right, and that little catchment aerial bowl off the front section of the green here, below the putting surface and above the water. And That'll be a pitch coming back up the slope with lots of green to work with. We saw Hannah Green down there in the previous group. You can only think Warren laying that far back that she wanted a flat lie for a second shot. I've seen her make a couple of questionable plays off the tee, laying well back with an iron. But I thought uh, five strokes back, she may be a little more aggressive. 
Baj Water here for Olivia Cowan, just trying to find a dry spot on the fairway following the precipitation we had over the past hour or two. Fairly heavy at times as well. Not a shot you really want to be playing from a wet lie either. Down slope over the water. You want your footing to be as secure as possible. You don't want a little slip about halfway back into the ball. Waiting patiently is our leader, Celine Boutier. Watching her second shot fairly intently. Sorry, Warren, I thought she was waiting there and she hit a shot. Uh, she was playing ready golf. I dare say she might have only just cleared the water on a line with the flag. She might have cleared the water by some three or four metres, if I'm not mistaken. No, nope. left bunker, Warren. There you go. Did look like a ball down there. But there's the evidence. And I'm sure she'd much rather be in that bunker as well. It's Cowan with her second. 208 metres. Starting at the right side of the green with the breeze pushing it further on. It won't be coming back and she, like Clyburn before her, will find that collection area some distance below the surface of the green as well. Quite a drop off the front right section of the green there. But with the upslope, be able to get plenty of club onto the back of that ball and should be able to spin one in fairly close. Really is a great design. Ball rolls back and you've got a much longer third shot if you do bail out short and right there, but it is more straightforward. If you want to be more aggressive and go at the flag, well, you can be rewarded with a good shot, but you'll be punished by short-siding yourself if it doesn't come off. Overall, such a great amphitheatre coming down to the 18th green, the iconic clubhouse in the background. Good gallery there underneath and up the top, awaiting the final group. And certainly if you're here with your friends on a golf trip, plenty of opportunity for your friends to heckle you on the 18th green. Puts a little pressure on. So they're going to be watching on from the veranda perch there in this magnificent clubhouse. What a spot it is. Right above the 18th green. Some fans milling around coming out to watch some very talented players on this co-sanctioned event between the ALPG Tour and the ladies European tour. They'll be up the road at Coffs Harbour next week for the New South Wales Open where Holly Clyburn, who was walking down the hill there to her, her ball, which, as you can see, it's some distance below the level of the putting green itself. She'll be the defending champion at the New South Wales Open next week. The event hasn't been held for the last couple of years. She won it back in 2015. Won it at the Oatlands Golf Club in Sydney. Harbour, a very different layout, but the girls are no doubt going to love the venue. We used to play a state junior championship there back in the 90s, and it's a wonderful golf course and a lot of elevation change there as well. Boutier, we see her in the left corner of the picture there. She's in that right-hand bunker. I thought she'd missed in that front left one, Warren, and I think she's going to be happy she's in that bunker because she has a lot more green to work with. It's Taylor made for the old chunk and run down the slope. Just get it out and let it feed. There's not much spin down towards the flag there. A couple of distinct levels on the 18th green. It's going to be Clyburn first to play. Just see the flag. As you can see by the divots around her, it's been a popular spot today. Sand wedge back in your stance. Land it 15, 20 feet short. Just let it release up. That was the idea. Just landed it 30 feet short instead. So not what Holly Clyburn was looking for. Well, it's been that kind of back nine. For the English woman as well, hasn't it? Start of the day. Now, outright leader by two. 
and now finds herself five behind Boutier. I'm going to take a sand wedge or a lob wedge from here. You've really got to fly it up there near the hole. See what Cowan can do. Looks, yeah, yeah, this is much better. Aggressive shot. Beautifully played from Cowan. And a good leave too. Six feet up the hill. Now we'll see how Celine Boutier approaches this bunker shot. The ridge line might be a factor as far as her line is concerned here. Might be able to just use it to feed the ball off and bank it back towards the flag. You can see she's looking well right. And the chunk and run would be an ideal shot, but it's very firm sand as well, so it's going to be difficult to do that. May have to catch it a little cleaner. Oh, this looks nice. Using the slope well and feeding down towards the flag. And with the way she's putted today, you just about mark her down for a four already. That's a beautiful touch. Just does everything so effortlessly. And she holds that. She'll move to 11 under, and Olivia Cowan does have an opportunity here to move to six under, but you play the third round a professional golf tournament in the final group and you equal the course record so that's a fairly commendable effort that is more than getting it done here today while everybody else has been going backwards this afternoon as conditions deteriorated and the rainstorm came through at around about 3 p.m maybe fractionally earlier local time now Clyburn it's been a great day for her, but she can ease the pain somewhat if she can just manage to nestle this one in. What do you think, Warren? She's going to hold this a couple of inches outside right. It's pretty makeable. Maybe a fraction more than a couple of inches, maybe a couple of cups. Yes. She got it. Well done. Oh, okay. It's a two over 74, though, after being at eight under at the midway point of this Australian Ladies Classic. She slides back to be six under. And some four shots behind Celine Boutier, who can do something about that by responding with a birdie of her own in just a moment with Olivia Cowan next to putt. And importantly, in this putt, be the exact same predicament for Cowan by making birdie be playing in the final group tomorrow Burnett and John Stott here finishing earlier at five under so Cowan is to tie second at six under and be in the final group tomorrow Lacked authority there. Uphill putt. Didn't quite have the pace to maintain the line. And it means that it's for a six shot lead for Celine Boutier. Another one, which has eyes only for the cup. And it's a big lead that Celine Boutier will carry into the final round of this inaugural Australian Ladies Classic at Bonville. What a performance from her. Terrific up and down from the bunker above the green here at 18. And a day in which she takes massive strides towards coming up with another victory in her nascent career such an impressive performance just the one bogey and the six birdies tossed in as well that is impressive didn't look like doing anything wrong today celine boot here 
So it's a five shot lead that she enjoys. With Olivia Cowan there in a tie for third place. Katie Burnett, Daniela Holmquist, Valdis Tora, Johns Dottier as well. All there in the reckoning should Boutier stumble. And there's 18 holes to play tomorrow and anything could happen. Hannah Green, another good week for the young Australian from Western Australia. In fact, she's there at four under. Rebecca Artis, the other Aussie on the front page of the leaderboard, is at minus three. Florentine Parker, the English woman. Two under par, three-time winner on the ladies European tour. She's inside the top 10. Andrea Wong, the American, minus one. So 12 players under par. Dame Laura Davies there at even par. Seven birdies and seven bogeys on her round today. She's tied with country woman Charlotta Thompson. We saw a bit of Jenny Hagland out there. She's even par in a time for 13th. And although they're 11 strokes back and one would think out of contention to win the tournament, good round tomorrow certainly could put any of these ladies inside the top five, top 10. A lucrative week for them. Absolutely. Kylie Henry there. First of the players in tie for 24th at two over par. Joanna Gustafsson, we saw some of her action today, likewise Shamila Nicolette, the Indian player. Also two over after an even par 72 in the third round here at Bonville. Shi Yu Lin with Marty Lun on the bag. Not the round she was hoping for today. Started at one under, fired a 75. She's two over for the tournament. And Carly Booth, impressive at 70 to move to plus three. Christina Kim there amongst a host of other players, including Australia's Whitney Hillier, also at three over par. Sarah Kemp, not the round she was looking for, plus four today. Annabelle Dimmick, young English lady there, plus five. Unfortunate plus six round today for Marianne Scarpnord. Stephanie Nahr, six over for the tournament, plus four. Donna Dryberg there from Scotland. Emily McLennan, 76 today and seven over for the tournament. Georgia Clark, rookie professional from the Gold Coast. Good week making the cut. All these girls may not be what they were looking for today, but good effort being around for the weekend. Felicity Johnson. Lydia Hall there. Plus 13. Brianna Gill. Plus 12. Lydia Hall. Lena Mule as well. Final couple of players there on the leaderboard as we look down on the scene here at Bonville, in the 18th green, and everybody in the clubhouse. And it's Celine Boutier out in front, the lady they have to catch tomorrow. And while well, she plays like she did today, they'll have their work cut out because she looks to be in fine form. And she really has one hand on the trophy at this point. 18 holes to go. As we mentioned, we've seen some famous collapses over the years. Um, none more so, of course, than the great white shark himself. Back in the 1996 Masters at Augusta. But, uh, well, she looks to be playing very nicely, Celine Boutier, and it would be a shock to see her stumble early and give them a chance. But you just, just never know, especially with all the water around here at Bonville. It's par 72 layout, par 5, par 5, so you get hot, you can make a move in a hurry. You do never know. There was just nothing today that resembled uh, anything like that was going to happen with Celine Boutier. Everything she did was pretty much spot on. Hit nearly all the fairways. Was always putting for birdies. 
Just a fantastic round for all this, really. Only the one drop shot, whilst we saw players making bogeys left, right and centre. Boutier just did nothing of the sort. Well, they are massive. Those gum trees here at Bonville, a real feature of this course on the north coast of New South Wales. And Annabelle Rowley is standing by with our tournament leader. I certainly am. Celine, beautiful round today of five under. You played some flawless golf out there. Can you talk us through your round? Thank you. Yeah, I feel like I was playing pretty solid all day. I made, you know, six birdies uh, in the day, so it's pretty good. And I, uh, today I only made one bogey, so I feel like that was uh, the main difference between today and uh, yesterday or the day before. I just felt like I was making too many mistakes um, yesterday and, today and two days ago. So I felt like uh, today I just handled the course very well in general. You know, it was tough, some tough, tough conditions out there. It was starting to rain and being a little windy, but um, I think I saved a bunch of um, good pars and had a lot of birdies so that helped a lot. It was very tough conditions out there and, and you were playing in, in rain for uh, a good part of the round. How did you manage those conditions, you know, staying dry and course management? Yeah, I think my caddy helped me a lot for that. Um, I think we handled it well. We, drained, uh, we stayed as dry as possible and that was a huge um, benefit for me. Um, I feel like I also had um, some good saves, you know, so uh, my putting was also crucial to making saving those pars and staying in uh, contention. I was going to mention your putting. It's been particularly impressive. Uh, you, you just like these greens. Um, you, you seem to be rolling it absolutely beautifully. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like the speed is um, is pretty nice. I feel like it's fitting my uh, my putting, and it's very. Um, I feel like I've been uh, hitting the ball well with the putter, like it's striking well. So um, I um, I don't know. I just feel comfortable on these greens, and uh, you know, as long as it's the same tomorrow, I should be okay. <laughs> yeah, I very much hope so. It is. You uh, you have a six shot lead going into tomorrow. What's the the strategy and mindset? Uh, you know, I think I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing for the past three days. It's been working out pretty well, so I, I'm just uh, going to play my game and try to hit it one shot at a time, and hopefully um, hopefully it'll be enough. I hope so too. Away from the, the tournament for a second, are you enjoying your time in Australia? Yeah, it's been great. It's my first trip in Australia, so uh, I didn't really know what to expect, but uh, no, it's been great. Um, I have been, you know visiting also a little bit outside of golf and it's always nice when you can get away from the tournament and the course and everything so no I've been having a great time so far. Excellent we're happy to hear that good luck tomorrow we'll all be watching Thank thanks so Celine. Much. Annabelle Rowley with Celine Booty are there six birdies just the one bogey on her round today a five under 67 terrific golf at this challenging par 72 layout and there she is the leaderboard. Well, she's actually won better than that, and so is Holly Clyburn. But it's a five-stroke lead going into the final round tomorrow. So many highlights from today's action, and plenty of them from our leader, Celine Boutier. There certainly were, and I've referenced a few times, Warren, how we just... It, she didn't look like she was going to do anything wrong, but overall we saw the full spectrum of what Bonville is about today. We saw a plethora of birdies, but we also saw so many mistakes out there apart from Boutier. So going into tomorrow, if Boutier does the same thing, she's going to be extremely difficult to catch. But we did see that it's possible to shoot yourself in the foot out there on occasions if you're not careful. Yeah, with the water, especially around the back nine, there are chances to make birdies, but you can rack up a number in a hurry, as Olivia Cowan did on the 12th earlier today. A triple bogey there cost her three shots, an outright second place and a spot in the final group tomorrow, of course, here at this Australian Ladies Classic. The course uh, played well. Let's take a look at some highlights from today in round three so far here in Bonneville. And at times, well, it was just outright pouring. Certainly was. Now, Nana Madsen here on the 12th hole, she found her water on the par four with a second shot. She said she'd be doing well to make a bogey. Well, she almost went one better than that. So it was starting to pour with rain, that rain squall that came through at that time about three o'clock. And Celine Boutier, Warren, and she's doing that all day long. We might have to add up her putts and get to the clubhouse in a moment to see exactly how many she had for the day because it wasn't that many. She was rolling them so well. The American Katie Burnett on 17 had eyes only for the flag stick there. Beautiful shot. Roll that one in. It was accessible today when the wind was a little more calm than it was towards the end of the round. This coming down the hill, Burnett making that putt for a two, despite a little slip there. Might have been a knock on if she was playing rugby league, perhaps. And a great round of 68 from Burnett. 
fist bump there with Sophie Gustafsson, her caddy. This was Olivia Cowan at 14. She made that triple bogey at 12. And a third shot to the par five. Fabulous effort. Tap in birdie. Got it back to minus six. Nice bounce back after the drama where she put two in the hazard off the tee. At 12, she bounced back with a par at 13. That birdie at 14. And Boudier just kept on doing what she did pretty much all day long. She told Annabelle a moment ago that the speed of the greens really suit her feel and stays that way. And there's no reason to suggest they won't uh, be like that tomorrow as well. And then, boy, she will take some stopping. Terrific tee shot right there. That was Rebecca Artis on 17, a round of one under par today. Played with Nana Madsen. And Madsen made her first birdie of the day at 16. And this was on 17. And birdie number two of the day there for Madsen. And Valdis Jons Dottier. Another one trying to pepper the flag here at the par three. Wind back into their faces, but at that stage still pretty calm, right over the top of the flag. That would have looked great off the club for the player from Iceland. And Holly Clyburn struggled the back nine, dropping four strokes, but thrilled to roll that one in on 18, which meant she'll be in the final group tomorrow with Boutier. And you mentioned Greg Norman before. This was Boutier to get to 11 under par, and it's so important to go head to head with the leaders. Look them in the eye. Such an impressive round of 67 by a leader by five. Celine Boutier there ahead of Holly Clyburn with that birdie at the last. Ensuring that she will be in the final group with Celine Boutier tomorrow. Katie Burnett, Daniela Holmquist, Olivia Cowan right there as well. Did well to get in after the dramas at 12. She was even par from that point on. And Valdis Johns Dottier there as well from Iceland also at five under. Hannah Green, another good week off a high place finish last week at Kuyonga at the Australian Open down there in Adelaide. Rebecca Artis is at three under. And then it Kurtz Madsen is also there at three under. So it sets up well tomorrow. Terrific layout. Great to be back at Bonneville on the north coast of New South Wales. I haven't visited here for five or six years, would you believe, you? And It's been far too long. Great to be back. It's been 15 for me. We used to play the Volvo Trucks Classic here on the PGA Tour of Australasia. 2003 was the last time I played here. And there's a history of established winners. Marcus Fraser won here, shooting 23 under par that year, won by eight strokes. So there's good scores on offer. We saw it so many times today. Trouble lurking just around the corner. Got to have your wits about you for the entire round. There are so many attractions up here on the north coast. What's the plan tonight? The big banana, perhaps? Uh, been there a few times before, and it is a great place to visit. <laughs> but uh, I might treat myself to maybe a couple of adult beverages in town, I think. Why? And a fine seafood fair as well. There's so much of it here in this part of the north coast of New South Wales. Tomorrow, the forecast is for storms. Again, we saw plenty of it today. It's sort of scattered the field at the top of the leaderboard, so we'll see how they handle things tomorrow. But they'll have had a little smattering of it today. They'll know what to expect, and uh, we'll see how they fare here in what will be the final round of this Australian Ladies Classic. Well, I hope you can join us tomorrow as the action continues from this Bonville Golf Resort.